So it is currently 9.08 Pacific time, Thursday night. The NBA draft is still going on. It's the second round is happening right now while we're recording this. But I wanted us to get in here and do an immediate reaction to the first round. Talk about y'all's biggest surprises, biggest disappointing picks, all that. Where should we start? We got to start with Big Vic. I mean, he's yeah. like, listen, he's the number one pick. We've been on this for about two years now. He's finally, like, officially a San Antonio Spur. I think everybody's happy. I think I think at this point, everybody's just excited to see him out on the floor. There's been, like, talk of him, you know, playing in some league. Like, is he going to play? Is he not going to play? I think yeah. he I think he is, like, actually going to play in some league. That's going to be a show whenever he starts off. But I, I was actually happy. It seemed like... Like, the NBA finally has, like, a prospect that they're like, hey, this is the guy. Everybody's all in. I've seen very minimal, like, hate or downing of, of Victor. And it's just yeah. like, this guy's up next. And now, like, tonight was just a coronation for him. Yeah, nobody actually watches him play basketball and thinks he won't be a star. The only people that hate are the people that are just, like, sick of seeing people say he's as good as LeBron. So they just, like, feel the need to be contrarians and be like, oh, he can't be that good. But, like, nobody has any actual opinions negative about him exactly. the only negative opinion that i've seen out there about him is like oh you skinny how is he gonna guard joel and yeah. nicola Jokic and that like the skinny big man disgusting conversation that's like so worn out but yeah, yeah overall lazy. like yeah i haven't seen any like real hate towards him whatsoever and i feel like this Everyone understands, like, I don't, I think even with Zion, a lot of people had like random concerns warranted, like, you know what I'm saying? That we're seeing them now about like his health yeah, and stuff like that. Stuff. But like, I think Victor's like a lot of people, people are treating him like he's almost a fra a flawless prospect. And it kind of is to some extent. Like, it's obviously like it's been talked about at length. We don't have to repeat what things everybody has said, but like, in terms of what you want from a modern big man, he has everything. People were comparing him. Like I saw there was a graphic on ESPN the other day in their latest mock draft before the actual draft happened. And it had like the best case scenario and the worst case scenario for each prospect. Best case scenario said Kevin Durant on offense and Kevin Garnett on defense. God, worst case scenario a... said taller Anthony Davis. <laughs> if Anthony Davis was seven foot five, he'd be a god. <laughs> like that's the worst case scenario. Being yeah, seven it's, foot five it's crazy. Sense. He's, yeah, he's, he's, ma he's mad number. tall. And his suit... His suit, I had, like, the top half. All, first of all, all, his entire suit looked like it was, like, a skinny fit type of suit. And his his pants were still so baggy. Like, he's so skinny. <laughs> he's so slim. But I think, I, I feel like over the last two weeks and as we've gotten closer to the draft, like, there was all this hyperbole about everything that Vic can do and, like, what he's going to, you know, do for the Spurs and, you know, revolutionize kind of, you know, what the what the next generation of like basketball players can look like but at the same time i think we've gone a step in the right direction and pulling back from these expectations like there was there was some conversations months ago where they're like if he's not an all-time great he's a you know he's a failure yeah, yeah. right if he doesn't win rookie of the year mvp in his first year he's a fail he's a bust this and that and i think we've gone in the right direction and saying like hey He's 19 years old, right? Like, it's still good. As good as we think he's going to be, it's still going to take a little bit of time. And so I think that's actually progress for NBA Twitter or, like, for, for NBA Hive. So For the discourse. That, yeah. yeah. So I think that's, like, that's probably the most positive thing I could take out of this whole, like, yeah. Vic experience. So you feel that way now, but once the season starts and... Oh, true. If yeah. he has... If he has Alonzo Ball type first game where he gets punked by a veteran that has 80 pounds on him... That's true. All of that idiotic discourse has come right back and people are going to be like he didn't score 35 night one he's a fucking bum <laughs> what's going to happen yeah yeah. listen one other the, part the league the league has to put him up against Joel Embiid night one oh my just god to, just to just so that like the bar can be set low and then it's nothing but up from there no I need Steven Adams I need, I need him to go against not a marquee player just a really big strong motherfucker <laughs> just like the opposite of him <laughs> y'all are insane y'all are insane <laughs> An interesting part of the discourse that I've been seeing is like everyone saying, oh, we haven't seen a player like this ever before, which is like true. But at the same time, we've seen like similar archetypes. And then I saw someone tweet out, yeah, we have. And then they posted a picture of Bulbul. And I was just thinking about it in my head. <laughs> um, like, yeah, we've seen like just random, like humongous big men who can like do elite dribbling moves and stuff like that. But just because you can do it don't mean anything. Like there was the... 
Yeah. Donovan, I'm sure you saw a video of Mitchell Robinson doing the most craziest dribble moves oh. like on Snapchat <laughs> or something like that, bro. Like he's insane with it. But that don't mean anything. And that goes for like, you know what I'm saying? We've seen the Bull Bulls, we've seen the Thon makers of the world and stuff like that. But the key differences between like them and Victor Wambanyama is like first off, like his ball handling <laughs> is, is that he could do it in game athleticism is O D. Like he literally yes, moves like a thing. guard and he gets extremely low when he dribbles. Like the Exactly. The wiggle he has is ridiculous. Yeah, most of these big guys, like Bull Bull is not a fast person. He's exactly. tall and he moves like he's tall. Vic dribbles and moves like with the smoothness of the hips and everything, like he's six eight. He looks like Jason Tatum when he dribbles. It's crazy. And yeah, like you said, he's athletic as hell. Like that put back dunk from the three point line just got a lot of you know, like buzz and virality from that. But that's like, even outside of the fact that it's a putback dunk, the sheer capabilities of covering that much ground in that much time can apply to so many other scenarios. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. He's, he's him San Antonio. They, they got a good one. <laughs> and like, I'm, I'm very excited to see, you know, what what's going down with him. I think that was, we've, we've known for t- basically two years that he was going to be the first overall pick. Yeah. So the interesting part of the draft yep. really came at two and three because we've been going back and forth for months on if the, if the Hornets were going to take Brandon Miller, if they were going to take Stu Henderson <laughs> mm-hmm. and they end up, you know, Charlotte ends up taking Brandon Miller, Portland ends up taking uh Scoot Henderson. And that in itself was on entire discourse that we can get into you know, trying to figure out like what the Blazers were going to do. But how do y'all feel about Brandon Miller going to over Scoot Henderson? I mean, I almost fell to my knees when I was live streaming on the TV. <laughs> like when I saw it happen, I was like, there's no way like they're this dumb, you know, if I was. But then again, I dropped like a slight hint of truth. I was like, yo, but if I'm MJ, I'm nuking this place and I'm making the, a terrible pick. I'm making the wrong pick just so I can like throw my deuces up and just walk out like that. But I didn't like it. It's what not a terrible pick. Huh? <laughs> What does he gain from that? <laughs> nothing. He gains absolutely nothing. It's about leaving that organization in shambles. <laughs> like if just you're gonna out of spite, yeah, just out of spite. He he doesn't gain anything. You're not a good person if you think like that. But it's not about that. Um, but I don't think it's a terrible pick. But I don't think it's the right pick. He's yeah, a great. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like everybody agrees. Nobody on Twitter thinks it was the right move. Everybody has been saying for the past few weeks when it's been like very clear they're gonna pick Miller the whole time. Everyone's been like, this is a crazy fucking fumble. What are they doing? I think people have gone a little bit too far with it. People are acting like they drafted Denny Avdija over him. Or like Scoot is like Steph. Like, Brandon Miller is a great prospect. Yeah. It's not like they drafted a bum over a surefire top two player in the world. Like, I, I would have picked Scoot too. I think the concerns over fit when you're at the point where you're at with Charlotte where they have like one good young player, you shouldn't be drafting for fit. But if you're going to do that, Miller makes a lot of sense next to LaMelo. He's at least in the same stratosphere of a talent as Scoot. Like, it's the I guess like like Mo said, it's the wrong pick, but it's not absurd. People like don't know how to talk about. You know what it is? People on Twitter are lower on Brandon Miller than like the general consensus, and people don't know how to be lower on a player without like hating him, and they have mm. to like immediately go the complete opposite way and be like, oh, he's a fucking bum. He's not gonna do anything. If they're gonna rue the day they didn't pick Scoot, I think Brandon Miller's gonna be a pretty good player. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, he's he's fine. He's fine. And I think I think another part of his. At the same time that we, you know, kind of knew that Vic was going to be the first overall all pick, for the last year and a half, we've kind of been told that, like, hey, Scoot Henderson would be the number one pick in the draft if it wasn't for Vic. Yeah. And so and so now that, like, Charlie gets there and it's a deviation from the norm, now everyone's like, oh, my God, like, you're, like they're losing their mind because they've been conditioned to think that Scoot Henderson is, like, sure fire yeah. the second best player in the world and would be, you know, the first pick if it wasn't for this generational talent prospect that that is Vic so I I think it I think it's okay I also think that it's the Charlotte Hornets so (laughs) any pick that they make I'm probably going to assume that it's the wrong one because they have outside of LaMelo they have one of the worst draft histories especially under MJ they have a track record of drafting the wrong guy at number two and so that's probably like that Knowing, knowing that this is MJ's last draft, there's nothing to me that that says, "Oh yeah, he made the he made the right choice." And Charlotte themselves were on the fence. They they were bringing these guys in for multiple workouts. <laughs> Brandon Miller had a bad first workout, according to them. They didn't really know what to do. 
even though that they said leading up to the draft that Brandon Miller was kind of the guy for them, it still felt like a shot in the dark and it felt like they were doing the wrong thing. Like Mo said, it it wasn't a mm-hmm. bad pick, but it was probably the wrong pick for them just because yeah. just because also, like you said, you're at a point where you don't have a full core. And so you should just take the best player available and figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I feel like one of the, when it comes to like the overall conversation of do you draft for fit or do you draft for like the best player available? It entirely depends on what status your team is at. And for a team like the Charlotte Hornets, who are shameless, they're just dis- they're just not a good team whatsoever. <laughs> well, they actually weren't that bad. They had a couple like you know surprising performances and stuff like that. But overall, like in terms of young teams and where they stand at, they're towards the bottom. No one believes in like what yeah. they're building right now. And if you're a team like that, then the teams in this instance, you need to go for purely like talent and figure everything else out later. And I feel like the yeah. fit between them wouldn't have been that bad. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that bad. And also, Scoot's probably going to be better than LaMelo. Like to pass on him, maybe maybe they disagree. Maybe they, they got him in their building. They scouted him more than we have. Maybe they just think Brandon Miller's just as good and can play with LaMelo. But... I think most of the NBA world believes Scoot can be as good or probably better than LaMelo. So I wouldn't let the presence of LaMelo ball prevent you from not getting that. Because even if that doesn't end up being the case and they're comparable, look what the Kings did. They drafted the point guard with Tyrese Halliburton. And then when they got to the point where they realized it is not going to work, you got to make a choice, they traded one and they got an all-star back. Like there's exactly. always moves to be made in the future. You're not handcuffed with two guards that don't fit forever. Yeah. Exactly. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> And so it just feels like a very Charlotte move. Oh, yeah, you know Dude, the, the moment is disgusting. <laughs> the moment the draft lottery came out and we knew Charlotte was at two. Immediately, people were like, "Oh, they're not going to fucking take Scoot. They're stupid. Like it is what it is." Like, yeah, it was expected, and they did exactly what we all thought they'd do. And you're still su- and you're still surprised because you look at them and you're like, "You can't be." <laughs> like this much of who you are right like like at, <laughs> like at a certain point you have to just listen to us for one time you've been we've been letting you do what you whatever you want to do we've been letting you cook for 13 years please trust us on this one take the take scoot take the better talent and and keep it moving and they just refuse yeah. but to be fair brandon miller is going to be a really cool fit with Lamelo. like having a he the, what do you want next your star point guard every team in the league wants a six eight wing that can create off the dribble and play off ball and defend a decent amount. Brandon Miller does all that. Maybe he doesn't have like the top 10 player in the world ceiling of Scoot, but he does feel a need that every team is searching for high and wide. Like It's impossible to find those guys. So if you have the position where you really believe in your young star point guard, you can get him that I do a running mate. You can get him a Jalen Brown or Paul George Light, Brandon Ingram, whatever. It's not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely not. I think they'll be fine. But like... I don't know. The, real, the draft skeptical. started after number two, and we can talk about number three and the poor, the Portland Trailblazers selecting Scoot Henderson. <laughs> that was, he sounds so sleepy. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He, he, I, he really, he really does. Because and he should be, he should be about the Portland. He should be sleeping. He should be sleeping on Portland. I think what Portland did was worse than what Charlotte did. Oh, I, what I, does that th- mean? I think, I, I think Portland did. By them picking Scoot and not making any other moves, I think that was the worst scenario for them. I think I think it was a, I think it was the dumbest scenario. I think if they think that pairing Scoot with Damian Lillard is a way for them to be competitive or a way for them to build like moving forward or even try to get to that win now state that they've been talking about all summer, that's the wrong move. They sh- they either should have if they wanted to keep the pick and draft Scoot, Dame has to go. Like that, that just, that just has to, it has it's to be, a, it's, yeah. and, and if they, and if they, and if they do, then I, then I like the pick. If they start the season with Damian Lillard and Scoot Henderson on the roster, I think it was the wrong pick because I, I, I don't think their timelines match up. I think you, you need to pick a side. Yeah, I agree. I am on board with you that they need to trade Damian Lillard and force a restart and say, sorry, man, you're the goat of our franchise, but take a fucking hike. I agree. But. They should have done it last year. They didn't. And they still got a top three pick. So they have their cake and they're eating it too. They're keeping their franchise goat happy. He's there. They're not ruining their relationship with the fans. But they're still rebuilding. They're still getting top three picks. They have now Shaden Sharp, Scoot Henderson. Like, that's a star of a young core. So 
if they can do both and just like force Damian Lillard to play with young guys and not, they're not going to contend. Clearly, they're not trying to contend. If they were, they would have traded the pick. So at this point, you... I think they're just rebuilding with Dame, and mm. Dame's not good enough to make them not rebuild. So I don't yeah. even think it matters. But if you, it, I think that does matter because you're going to do what, like, let's say a team like the Warriors done. You know, not to say like Jonathan Ming, coming is going to be a star, or Moody Moses Moody's going to be a star or anything like that. But there are plenty of examples that's shown that have been around in the past to where like because of the veteran talent that you have now naturally like the rookies in your team and their talent are going to be suppressed and so i assume like there's no way that they're going to be there's no way that they're going to be playing together in my mind like that's just like i'll be shocked i don't really think that though i think they will like i said they're straddling they're trying they're doing what the warriors did and rebuilding while contending except they know they're not real contenders they're just putting on the facade to keep lillard happy but really they're just rebuilding because even, they're going to start. They're probably going to start together. And I don't even think it's the worst fit in the world. You have one guard who's an incredible outside shooter, pick and roll threat. And you have another guard who is an incredible passer and penetrator. Like those skills complement each other. Lillard can do things off ball while Scoot gets his touches. And like they don't have that at stake. Yes. Okay. On, on, paper, on paper, you say that and it, and it fits. You also have to remember that one of these guys is 19 years old. And it's like he's he's a rookie, and unless you think that he's gonna come in and be one of the best, what thirty five players in the league or so, or something like that, that fit is not gonna help Portland get to where get to where they, they want to go. And I'm only judging the Blazers because I don't believe in the Blazers moving moving <laughs> forward. Like I don't, they're not they're not a credible team. They didn't they can't make the play and they can't be in the top ten in, in the West. And so, but let's say if they start this they start this year. With Lillard, Simons, and Henderson as their as the as the three guys, right? And one of and Sharp. One of them has to go. Like one one of them has to go. I think that they should either trade Dame, maybe even trade Simons to get just a little bit more depth and really go all in on this um on this two man backcourt. But to have those three guys in the backcourt and have that that rotation, I think it's a it's a really big mistake. And I think for Portland, the reason why I think it's so bad is because it exemplifies everything that they that they've been over the last five years, which is you're really an NBA purgatory. You're not good yeah. enough, right? You're not good enough to be a true contender. You're not bad enough to be well, I guess I well they, listen, that's what I'm saying. But, they are but, but hold on, but hold on, but hold on. But they got lucky. They got lucky. They weren't supposed to get three, right? They, the They're odds supposed to get five up. or something, right? The maybe I, I forget. I forget what the original odds were. Either way, they're a bottom ten team in the league while keeping their goat. Like I see what you're saying, but it's under the assumption that they want to contend, and they're going to say that. But they know they're not going to, and they're just going to continue to be shit, even though they have Lillard. Like in the day, they're not going to be mid. Like you're saying, the worry is maybe they're just going to be mid and get themselves out of the lottery odds and stuff. But they're not going to be. They suck. Like you're saying, their roster doesn't make sense. They're a trash team. They're going to continue to rebuild even though they have Dame. That's that the point. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the point is that even at that point, you are holding yourself back from a rebuild. But they're not. They got a top three pick. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, but you if you have if you have Damien, if you truly want, want to rebuild and you have a 31-year-old Damian Lillard who yeah. can who can go and get you another Hall of Picks and really really kick this this uh, rebuild into overdrive? You're doing yourself a little bit of a disservice by keeping him there and not fully exploring all the options that you have. Yeah. See, the yeah, deepest part exactly. of that is limiting the touches that Scoot will have and Anthony Simons and Shaden True. Sharp, and that's where True. I'm like I heavily dis like disagree whether okay. if they decide to go ahead and roll it out. Yeah, you get a top three pick in your ass regardless, but like, what type of ass are you? There's two types of ass. We all know this. It's not really break it down. About. Break it down for him. <laughs> first right, type of ass. Smith, break down the multiple types of ass to me. First top of ass, Houston Rockets. He ain't got nothing good going on. Vibes mm. are terrible. And and then and then another good a good type of ass <laughs> is a team that like you know they don't have a lot good going on, but the vibes are tremendous. The veterans are there who are, who don't take up mm. too much space and all Medium that. And a team teams. that I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I could I would say like the Orlando Magic <laughs> or you would say like the Detroit Pistons or someone of that nature who's like 
there's a real trajectory for them uplifting themselves rather than like mm. playing this weird ass waiting game or like okay like haha school gets 25 minutes one night and he only gets up like eight shots and that like that even alone like messes with the player's psyche and their ability to develop to their fullest potential you know for yeah, sure yeah so uh, that's why i'm like i'm so off that that makes sense yeah at this point they're they're a slim a slim thick team <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. not even not not even not even not even what, they got flat back <laughs> <laughs> just, just a long back just a long back <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right man yeah uh, none of us really agree with the with the route they're going i'm kind of just like Whatever. As long as I'm it ends up it. with them. I'm, I'm over it. I'm over all all the Damian Lillard talk. We do this every single year. I Please, don't. nobody should report on Damian Lillard until he gets traded. I don't care if he says he wants to stay. <laughs> I don't even care if he says he wants to leave. Until Wojder Sham says, hey, he's not going to be playing for the Portland Trailblazers. Do not contact my phone. Because I'm so, I'm <laughs> so sick and tired of it. They did all of this posture like, oh, we we're trying to get ba- we're trying to get Bam. We might try to get uh, Zion in the room. Are we gonna trade number three in and Simons? Y'all weren't y'all weren't about anything. You're just <laughs> an hate, unserious franchise. Of Zion stuff. I hate that all that stuff was fake as hell. Wolves we'll went ahead and, and during the draft. That's draft. draft season. Yeah, he was like, I talked to all GMs. No one said anything about Zion Williamson. He is so not room, in the rumors room. go crazy. The only thing that, yeah. that Rose said is that they want Scoot and want to move up. He didn't say they're going to give up one of their stars. So they tried to be unserious and be like, we'll give you anything you want besides the two stars. And those teams yeah. were like, be fucking for real. Like, you they're trying to run star. this like it's a fantasy league. Like, yeah. <laughs> just just lying. I, I can't stand like, it. I'm, like I'm, done, I'm done with the Blazers. I, I can't stand yeah. it. Asking yeah, for Bam out of Bible was the most irritating thing ever, too, bro. That's, that's, that's just a way to get blocked. That's stupid. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we got a few more big pickups to talk about. The next pick is obviously Amin Thompson goes to Houston, Fire. which I love. I'm the biggest Amin Thompson fan in the world. I think he's the number three prospect in this draft. I think he'll be better than Brandon Miller. I think he's going to be a six seven Rondo, and if he can start to shoot a little bit, he's going to be a super soldier. Like he's going to be ridiculous. He's the most athletic player in the draft, besides Scoot and however you want to qualify Wemby. He's a non human, yeah. but. He's incredibly athletic. One of the fastest people I've ever seen move. His quickness is absurd. He's a passing genius and has like really good vert at the rim. I don't see any world where he doesn't become a really good player. And pairing that passing slashing specialist next to Jalen Green, I think will help him so much not having to be the only guy in these on-ball pick and rolls. You can free him from the shackles of Kevin Porter and actually have a creator next to him that can help him. I love yeah. it. That's that's gonna that's gonna be huge, and you get him with the serious coach like like Ime Udoka, yeah. like Houston. Houston finally has something where it's like, hey, listen, listen, they might be able to be the the good the good kind of you okay, know, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, kind of ass. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They can they can move up a, a little bit. So I I mm-hmm. like the pick as well. Yeah, they're gonna be a serious basketball team for the first time in the last five years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it was a phenomenal pick. Um, and now even outside of like Jalen Green, this the fit is like interesting alongside saying Goon, and yeah. they're just like a few vets away now from like being a legit team and being on that upward trajectory. I don't know if I mean is gonna who be are like, their vets? Do they have any vets at this point? Well, no, I'm just Porter Jr. <laughs> oh my god, god. bro, that's <laughs> that's terrible, bro. Uh, I mean, they might get Harden, you know. Yeah, but they're but, definitely going no, they're to. Really they're making young. that huge push. They're making that huge push. They, like, I've seen all types of names, and it sounds like they're going to land someone, and everyone understands, like, what is missing and, like, the shenanigans that were going that was going on on the quarter there last year will not be happening this year. Absolutely not. So, it was a great pick. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, it's going to help Jabari Smith a lot, too. Oh, I forgot he just existed. He looked like crap last year. But, again, an unserious basketball team. He'll he'll get better. He's not going to be as bad as he looked. He's not a complete bust. Yeah. And just, just in, everybody's going to be helped by them having some sort of cohesion. Create actual, actual point guard. Yeah. One thing that I want to say, though, is that, like, if these Thompson twins, like, come out and they don't look like they belong on the court at all, 
OTE is going to be under a serious <laughs> microscope. <laughs> <laughs> and the crazy, we're going to see some insane narratives, and that's going to be labeled as, like, the fakest league to ever become. <laughs> it's the big baller <laughs> if league. If they're, like, so bad, you know? No, yeah, yeah. So, their, their reputation's on the line. Yeah, exactly. I, I Speaking of, the, let's talk about the other Thompson twin. Ooh, let's do it. The other Thompson twin, Asar, is on the Pistons. I got For those so who don't know... Wow. Asar has always been viewed as a slightly worse prospect than Amen, mostly because he doesn't have the on-ball chops as Amen. Amen's like on-ball creator, incredible passer, can really penetrate. Asar's more of a 3 and D type of guy, but projects to be a really good 3 and D guy because he also has a basketball IQ of Amen, even yeah. if he doesn't necessarily use it as a passer. But Amen can't shoot at all, and Asar has shooting upside. So a little different of a player. I, I like Asar a lot. I'm I'm a, I'm a really big Asar fan. I would like I I didn't love the fit with like I I didn't love the fit with Detroit just because I felt like there was a, a more ideal spot for for Detroit to go and that I wanted Asar to go. I wanted Asar to drop to 7 and play uh and and play with Tyrese Halliburton in Indiana. Mm. I thought that that would have been fantastic. That'd be cool. And have and you know have Tyrese with his passing acumen and have somebody who can play who can play off ball a great cutter like like him. Have somebody who can play defense the way Asar can. Um, but for for Detroit, I think I think it's going to be a very interesting fit with him and Cade coming back and Jaden Ivey also growing. And you have a you have a lot of guys who can create. But I'm also very curious to see the fit and how everybody's going to be able to fit into into their roles and for sar like like you said that three point shot is really really going to have to fall this first year and so i don't know if i don't think it is going to going to be like he's not going to be knocked down his first year i don't i don't think that that's going to happen so um but to have somebody who can who can play defense the way he is he he doesn't like you said he doesn't have all the passing stuff that that a man has he has the little outlet pass in his bag, though, right? Yeah. He could put he could push the ball up the floor. So I think for Detroit, they might they probably be able to play a little bit faster, especially with Ivy. Like they're they're going to be a really really fun team this year, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like you. I didn't love the selection from Detroit, but it's a good player at the end of the day. And like players like him, literally all twenty all other twenty nine teams would take a player like him. So it's like not that big of a deal. I don't think it's ideal for his like personal career and the trajectory and potential of him fulfilling yeah. the best version of Asar Thompson. But like, regardless of the fact, like he is going to stick on this roster. Uh, would he play the three, or would he? Yeah. Or do we, yes, yeah, yeah. I totally disagree. I think it's a perfect fit. Uh, he's not going to be like a, he's not Grady Dick. He's not like the best shooter in the draft type of dude right now, but. He has that shooting upside. He's shown shooting talent throughout his high school career. In his first year at OTE, he shot better from three. I know he had a rough uh, shooting splits in his second year. But I think he's going to be the ideal off-ball connector to play next to good ball handlers. And so for a team that their foundational blocks is two lead guards, to get a really smart three that can play off-ball and do everything in between, I think that's exactly what you want next to Cade and Jay Nivey. Like this is, I was hoping they're going to pick him. I know a lot of the noise wow. earlier in the draft process was Jairus Walker, which would be a cool fit. But I think Asar is going to be perfect. That's like such a great one through three to build around. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking maybe I, I kind of like the fit with, with potentially Taylor Hendricks and mm -hmm. going, going, going to Detroit and them having somebody who's, whose shooting is like a primary part of their bag. You know, yeah. and so having having that with Caden and Jada, I think that would have been very helpful to add to to that young core, and then just figure out the the connector piece later. Because at the end of the day, like even with Cade, they are eventually probably going. They're going to get to a point where Cade is going to be driving a majority of the offense, and so having Ivy there as the second guy, I don't I don't think that they needed to put a lot of priority into figuring out that connector right now and investing, you know, like the fifth overall pick in that. So that's that's that's, that's, hard that's, to the, find. that's the only difference. So to say connector, like he's going to play awful. He's not going to be running pick and rolls. It's just like when the ball gets swung to him and he attacks a closeout, mm -hmm. he can make plays happen, swing it to the right guy, knock down that shot, be a good cutter. Like I think it's hard to find that type of guy. Yeah, exactly. Like I want to say that type of guy. Like it sounds like the golden boy of all that is like someone like Aaron Gordon. Everyone's talking about his process. Sorta. I want to say he's like a connector, but like someone who just does the dirty work 
I'm thinking yeah, athletic Josh sense, Hart like, right now. This is a connector. Josh huh? Hart's okay. The, the connect the it's Golden State Igadawa. That's the real comp. Because hmm. the Thompson is are also hmm. good defenders. They're long. They're six seven to six eight. Good secondary passers can play off ball. Be a defend the number one wing option. Like that's the goals for them to have the two lead ball handlers and then Andre Igadawa next to him. Yeah, yeah. It's listen. Both both of these guys are, are great, and their their floors are extremely high because they have that length, because they have that that defensive versatility. So, I, yeah. I, I think I think all of us are are high on the Thompson twins. So I'm really excited For to sure. see them to see them get out there. Let's see, we got some more interesting picks in the rest. Of, we're just gonna go through the lottery. We're not gonna go after that much deeper. Yeah. But listen, we got to speed through these. We're getting <laughs> we're getting into the middle tier. I don't know a lot about Anthony Black. I know. The Magic, there's been reports they're going to trade one of Suggs or Cole Anthony because clearly they want another guard who became Anthony Black. So there's a logjam there now. I think they can trade either of those guys and be fine if they believe in Anthony Black. Cool. Just so, trade both of them. Yeah. My, <laughs> for, my, for, when I was for. streaming, <laughs> when I was streaming earlier today, I made an emphasis that, like, you know, like when it comes to Orlando Magic, they have the three pillars of their franchise already. Winter Carter Jr., Franz Wagner, and also... Um, of course, like when, oh, Paulo and Paolo. Yeah. And so all, all, all three of those dudes, they're not going anywhere. The minimum that you need is like backup positions or whatever. You're good. You're not drafting for that. The biggest question mark for them is obviously like the two position, but at this point in the draft, like you don't have, that's not there anymore. But other than that, yeah. it's like the one position. I don't really trust Markel Fultz, even though he had like a phenomenal season, his history screams like injury prone, and he's not like he's he's a good fit, but he's not like the most ideal fit around mm-hmm. Paulo and all those boys. Now, for why sure. I say that, like Anthony Black, he's not the most ideal fit either, but he's a much better fit because, of course, like he's just bigger, and the Orlando Magic are absolute sluts. They lose their mind when it comes to bigger people than <laughs> their than their average <laughs> position. So it's that on top of oh wow, he has something that these other people don't have. He has actual passing vision, and he's an absolute <laughs> dog on defense. Uh, it's worth the pick, and I think he's a very good insurance plan for like whatever. Whenever this like Marco Fultz trial run ends, the f- amazing story. But I think Anthony back, Anthony Black, he's definitely gonna be like one of the finishing pieces, one of the complementary yeah. pieces alongside all those three guys. I can see that. But yeah, the problem True. is the Magic have a lot of guards, but none of them are like set in stone gonna be a cornerstone. So exactly. if that's the case and you know you have a lot of guys that can go either way, there's no problem with picking somebody that you think has a chance to be that guy. Especially because they don't have a ton of positional like needs. They have their three of the future. They have their four of the future. Wendell Carter might be their five of the future. Definitely like, is. Guard is all the... Like, Franz, Paulo, and Wendell aren't going anywhere. You got to find those yeah. guards. So even though they got a bunch of them, you got to keep taking bites of the apples to find the one that sticks. Yeah. 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 Truly. So to the Next up, we got... So this next one was interesting. The Pacers had the seventh pick and traded back with the Wizards, who moved up to the eighth pick in exchange for a couple second-round picks. Because the Wizards want to get their high upside guy, their project that they're going to cultivate over the next few years of the rebuild, Bilal Colaby, who a few weeks ago nobody knew his name. But he's every year we had this one guy that rises up the draft boards in draft season. It happens in the NBA, happens in the NFL. This year was Bilal. For those who don't know, he was uh, Wemby's teammate in France. Mm-hmm. And he's like a six eight guard that's like a guard Giannis, where he's like crazy athleticism, and want, they needs to go to a team that can mold him and put it all together. How do y'all feel about this pick? I literally, literally, here's 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 what I thought. They they made the pick. He put on the Pacers hat. I was like, okay, interesting pick for the Pacers. He got traded to the Wizards. I said, damn. This pick sucks. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> right? Like, I just don't Damn. trust Washington. It's the same thing like with Charlotte. I don't trust Washington on projects. I think that their infrastructure is bad. I think their talent development is awful. And so I actually feel bad for him because I don't think that he's I don't think he's gonna be in a position <laughs> to to succeed. We and we're gonna talk about Washington a little bit later because of all these trades, but like they have they don't, office now. Maybe they're better. They don't they don't know what they're doing. At least right now, they don't Are know what they're doing. Are you not a fan doing. of the moves they've been making? They don't they <laughs> okay, don't we'll know what they're doing. They don't Let's they don't know what I they're doing. I disagree strongly. We'll get to this. Yeah. For, for forty for forty years, the Wizards have been doing <laughs> they've been doing this. And they they are a mess. So right now I'm very skeptical of it. Just because of and it has nothing to do with him. And 
maybe this comparison actually no not maybe this comparison is literally only because he's french but i see him going to the wizards and the only thing that i can think of is he's frank nilakina that's, uh, <laughs> that's yeah, the, only thing, also, the only thing i can think same of. type of cut coming into the draft that's same, it like he has no tattoos same french look like yeah i understand <laughs> that i understand that's that. all i but, can think of in general this is a good pick for where the state of the wizards are at where you're just like revamping everything and at this point you need to throw shit at the wall to see what yep. sticks no matter exactly. like no you don't want and picking someone like jaris walker or anybody who projected as like or projected as like a good role player is the worst thing to do in a scenario like this because you're looking for a wow factor you know and yep. this is where you have an opportunity to do something like that and if he doesn't pan out no one cares exactly no one's they're, they're going to year one of a rebuild they have zero foundational pieces and they're not in a high point of the draft where they're going to get a guy that's for sure going to be that guy like you said the other options are like good role players you might as well take the biggest swing you have literally nothing to lose you're going to be the worst team in the league next year why not take the biggest one you can as early on for a guy that could potentially completely change your rebuild yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll, under- we'll talk. We'll talk about it later. We'll, we'll talk about Washington. Later. <laughs> oh my god! All right, what about the other side of this draft? You guys like Jarris Walker in in Indiana? I, love I do. Yeah. I do. It's it's a it's a great fit. I think building mm-hmm. building up building up the defensive infrastructure around Tyrese Halliburton is fantastic. Um, I think I I think it's a it's a great pick. Yeah, having him and Miles Turner be your two defensive pieces in the front court. That's incredible. Like they, yeah. their four spot has been the weakest point the past couple of years, and they were still like a borderline playoff team last year. This team's gonna be really good next year. Ah, they're still looking to, to replace Thaddeus Young. I see. Shame <laughs> on <that. laughs> This is overall. Thaddeus like Young team. doesn't even believe that. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know what's funny is like swole supercharged Thaddeus Young like isn't the worst comp in the world. <laughs> Here's why. I know. I know. It's actually not that bad whatsoever. Thaddeus Young is such a good player. Yeah, he could pass a little bit too. Jairus Walker doesn't really have that in his bag, but like in terms of like defensive archetype and like the way you can shoot a little bit and like be that guy at the four, it's kind of like that he is young. Yeah, I'd love to see it. That's a great yeah. pick by Good pick. Pacers. Good pick for them. Yeah, I love that for them. Next up, we have the Jazz got Taylor Hendricks. Cool. Him and, he fits next cool. to Larry Markin, another big guy, give them some size. N- nothing, no real thoughts about it. Yeah, no real thoughts. Cool. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Good pick by them, though. They're. They're another team that's early into a rebuild, and they're another team that's like too good to be completely crap. And they're doing like the middle tier rebuild, and landing guys like Taylor Hendricks is what you got to do in that point. You got to just chip away at it and get more and more good players and do your thing. Good pick. Yeah. Yep. So I agree. Which the, Utah front office. The tragic part here is he almost fell to the Mavericks at ten, which mm. Taylor Hendricks would have been awesome with the Mavericks, but yeah. that didn't happen. So the Mavericks traded back from ten to twelve. And essentially offloaded the Davis Bertans contract. The Thunder took it off their hands to move up to 10 because Cason Wallace was still available, who was apparently the Thunder's guy. And they moved up and grabbed him. A lot of people love Cason Wallace. I don't know a ton about him, but everybody loves him. You ain't got to know none other than like he is a <laughs> combo guard, a bigger guard who's out of Kentucky. Them boys have an insane they track don't record. Miss. And so you just have <laughs> to believe in the hype. Overall, Are you saying like, Devin Booker? No, <laughs> but he's super complete though as a as a guard. You know, I would say he, I wouldn't say he has like shades of Jamal Murray or anything like that. But the type of player that he is, literally, stick him on any roster and he's going to thrive. That's just who he's, he's going to find ways to succeed. Whether he's doing a bunch of cool stuff offensively or impacting the game on the other side of the court. Overall, he's it's a it's a great move and I I love it. Me personally, I thought that another team should have selected him because I, I think he has uh, not a super high ceiling, but he has a great chance to be like a top 20, 15 point guard in the NBA or whatever. Um, and so I like it. This is a fantastic move by, by the OKC Thunder. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So many people love him. Everybody I listen to says he's their guy. So like, I'm excited to see him. I don't watch college basketball, so I'm not familiar with him. It's not a prospect I got around to researching. And I, I look forward to seeing how he fits with this roster because the Thunder are going to be one of the teams I watch the most next year for sure. Absolutely. Playoff bound, baby. <laughs> After that, we got Jet Howard to the Magic, which was a surprising pick for most people. I have no thoughts. Why was that surprising? I saw this dude play in person. Um, this is 
so earlier when I was in the stream, y'all should really follow us on TikTok if you don't already. Um, <laughs> I was saying how, you know, I was talking about the Lakers and how if this dude does end up falling, that he'll be a perfect fit pick for the Lakers. Um, and I say the exact same thing for the Orlando Magic because he's a shooter. That's exactly what the Orlando Magic need. They they have no solidified two like we were talking about. Their guys are yeah. all in the front court. And they have nobody in the back court to give them any real assistance um, or any back line. They have nothing to rely on whatsoever. And Jet Howard is a perfect type of player. You can create here and there a little bit, but mainly you just want him to fucking like shoot the shit out of the ball. And that's what he is, and that's what he does. And I watched him play in person, actually, when I was in Indiana. Um, and he was not as good as advertised by then. His draft stock was like – his dra- I saw his draft stock was really high. It was like top 12, and obviously he ended up being that. But at that time, I was like, I don't really see it. Draft stock fell, and then the Orlando Magic went ahead and souped him up. I think this was a great fit and pick, and this is going to thrive there, to be honest with you, just with the nature of everyone else's play style. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Solid. I think, I, I think the Magic are one of the most interesting young cores in the league. I'm a huge Palo guy, so if it's a great fit, he brings them some spacing. I can't wait to watch them. Play inbound next year. Let's do it. <laughs> the... Last few picks, the Magic, not the Magic, the Mavericks ended up getting Derek Lively, who Great pick has been described to me as JaVale McGee, but hopefully smart. <laughs> yeah, cool. great, great. Listen, it's a it's a really good positional pick for them. They've needed they've needed a they needed defense at the five for a long time, and then for them mm-hmm. to be able to get that tonight and get off of Berton's contract and really free up a lot of cap space and get themselves some some flexibility, I think that they had a, a fantastic night and and something that they can be very happy about. So, I'm I'm good. I'm good with what Dallas did today. Yeah, it makes sense. It's, it's always like a flip of a coin i saw earlier listening to the through the wire draft show i know kenny made a point where he was like listen you draft these guys and everyone says oh he might be tyson chandler but he also might be willie collie stein so it's always kind of <laughs> up these type of guys and that's so facts like so many of these just like rim running bigs are either really good or really useless and out of the league so we'll see where this one goes yeah. yeah, he's he's playing with. Listen, he's playing with Lucas. So his job is going to be much much easier. So I I have hope that he can be they can be um, a solid contributor for them. Okay. Yeah. Last two picks got Grady Dick to the Raptors. Who I know a lot of people were like iffy on him because he's kind of a one dimensional player, just really a shooter, doesn't have a high ceiling. That's but what they need. Yeah, the Raptors are running it back. Clearly, they love this fucking core and they're going to keep them together forever. So adding a shooter on the wing, fine with me. Makes total sense. I feel they like shouldn't everybody have, needs some they, dick they shouldn't in their have picked life, him, man. Though. Grady Dick is, I wanted him on a lot of teams across the board. Like, he would have been, I'm not good for Orlando, but he would have been good on a majority of any team. Like, he's yeah. not he's not anyone who you give, like, an, an extreme low to or any extreme, like, aspirations and goals. There's a bar, and he will meet the bar, and then that's, <laughs> that's the type of player yeah. he is. And you appreciate it. Well, he'll that. be helpful for a team's bench. That'd be good. Who yeah. round out a good team's lineup? I mean, listen, but if they saw, I don't know if they saw him though, because if they saw the jacket that he was wearing, they probably wouldn't have picked him. Well, that, <laughs> that 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 jacket was wild. That was too much. For me. Grady Dick, welcome to the TikTok abyss. You will be in a future oh, yeah. draft no, video. We're, we're flaming it'll be him. The worst decision of your life. <laughs> if I would have saw that man <laughs> try to enter the green room, I would have denied him in front of his wife or girlfriend and parents and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Not for a clear that's funny. Yeah. To round out the lottery, we got the Pelicans taking Jordan Hawkins. Love it. Nice. <laughs> Love it. On to the next topic. I'm over I'm over the draft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll leave the rest of the first round and the second round for another day to talk about. Just because the NBA Finals is over doesn't mean that you have to stop using underdog fantasy. There's sports going on every single day all throughout the summer that you can make entries on. And you can make them on the app or you can make them online because underdog fantasy is the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports online. And if you sign up today using promo code TD3, underdog will double your first deposit up to $100, which is free money to make more entries all throughout the summer, right before NBA season tips back off again. So sign up today using promo code TD3 and get in on the action with underdog fantasy. We have the thing that you saw the title hooked around, which we have actually just haven't talked about yet. We have three really, really 2.5 crazy ass trades that happened in the past few past week, really. And we're going to do a little exercise where we're going to grade each trade. 
from the perspective of every team. So this will be ju- fun. Let's jump. Let's jump into it. I'm so for, ready. First trade, the trade that honestly rocked the basketball world like four or five days ago when it happened. The Wizards finally traded Bradley Beal a year too late, but nevertheless they traded him. Who is, he is now a Phoenix Sun. They sent him over in exchange for Chris Paul, uh, Landry Shamit, six second round picks, and four first round pick swaps. And they sent back Bradley Beal and Jordan Goodwin, most favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, lying. <laughs> yeah, he's totally lying. So first off, what grade are you guys giving the Phoenix Suns for this trade? The Phoenix Suns, they deserve C. like a... Whoa. C. Well, I was going to say like B plus. We're going like, to have so much disagreement during these trade talks. I can't wait. Wow. Yeah, I, Why this, is, this, is a, this is a C for me. I don't... I am not... Second round oh, let me picks... Let real quick. This is an A, by the way. An A. There's an A. A. Okay. First off, second round picks to me mean absolutely nothing. And if you if you're talking about a rebuild, listen. Congratulations. Oh, no, we're talking about the Suns. Oh, okay. Oh, for the Suns. My yeah, bad. My bad. I, okay. B. B. B okay. plus. That makes sense. I was like, what are you talking about? Okay. I, okay. But yeah, my bad. I thought we were talking about from Washington's perspective. Definitely Suns. Yeah. B plus. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people were down on this trade because. If you watch that series against the Nuggets, nobody left it thinking, oh, this team needs a third star. What they need? Another shooting guard who thrives in the mid-range. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's not their thing. So it's not the perfect fit because it doesn't really solve any of their issues. It doesn't give them depth. It doesn't give them a new playmaker to replace Chris Paul. It doesn't give them uh, rim protection, anything they needed. But they were going to cut Chris Paul for nothing a week before that. And you can turn Chris Paul... And a garbage shooting, not say garbage, but below average shooting guard in <laughs> Landry Shamit into an all star in Bradley Beal. You do that 100 out of 100 times. There's a big downside because the contract is ridiculous and it's your, it's your all in move. But if you're going to have to have a skill set that's duplicative where you have your three top guys all do the same thing, I want that skill set to be being 30 points per game, three level scores. Yeah. The only daunting thing about this is like, Pri- like literally seven days ago, the last time we reported recorded this podcast, the Phoenix Suns pretty much had like a a lot of their picks left, and now all that shit is gone. Like they <laughs> have like Isaiah Thomas emptied the clip; it's all gone, and so that's like daunting because like of the situation and positions that they could be in. So I can't give them an A because no trade clause are Lydia are literally yeah. like. An abomination to the NBA world. <laughs> so I yeah. love it for players, of course. I'm all for a player empowerment, but like in terms of like your organization and it warping the entire direction of your team, like that's why I can't give this an A because it can be very dangerous. Unless you win a championship, then it's worth everything. It's worth the pain and the struggle of trying to come off Beal in that expensive contract, and also him like green lighting and red lighting whatever team that he wants to move on to next potentially. But yeah, this is easily a B, like B plus, like you said, because they had no other option. CP3 was finna get wave that didn't up, did up happening. Like you said, he 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 got traded to the Wizards for a short amount of time, and so yeah, like this is like it was. I don't understand people why people hate this, Donovan. And okay, I guess so it's time. To I, well, I yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, yeah. why people hate it. And I I said B plus. It's a B minus. It's a B minus for for these reasons. One. Bradley Beal hasn't scored 30 points in two years. He hasn't played, he hasn't played, he hasn't like averaged 30 points in, in two years. He hasn't played more than 60 games in four years. That's the scary part. Right. Yeah. And you go from, you trade, either trading or cutting Chris Paul, who also gets hurt all the time, and trading him for another guy who's making even more money than he is and who has a no trade clause. That and like you said, has a skill set that you already have two other guys who do that on the roster. Like Chris Paul, say say what you want about it. At least he filled a need that Phoenix had. So there's there's those three things. And I think that for Phoenix, they got the wrong guy out the building. DeAndre Ayton is the one who's 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 supposed to be out because he's the one where he's making a little bit too much money for everything that they're asking him to do. And now you've really, really pigeonholed yourself into having these four guys 
they're going to try and trade Aiton. There's been some reporting that it's been like tough for them to find a trade suitor for Aiton. But you have really pigeonholed yourself into having these four guys campaign and then you, me, and Mo on the roster <laughs> to try and win a championship. And they're going to have absolutely no depth. The second apron yeah. is, is the second apron is going to kill them. So it's 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 an all in move. I appreciate like the gusto from them. It's probably for the wrong guy, though. Who I agree. also gets to keep agree. his no-trade clause. But see, here's the thing is, I 100% agree. All those problems are continuously be problems. But there were problems before this, too. People were acting like this trade created that. They were already going to have no bench, already have no flexibility going forward. The difference is, they had a 40-year-old superstar, not even superstar anymore, they had a 40-year-old guard, and they replaced them with a 30-year-old one. This, the issues didn't get worse. They're the same. It, so, no, and exactly, and that's why, and that's why, but, 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 it's, but, that's but, why, but, that's but, why it's bad. That's why it's bad though, because the, if the issues are the same, if no, the no, issues no. Are, the, are the same, and they play the same, whether you're forty or thirty, they play the same amount of games, and now you just gave up half your draft to have the same problems. No, the thing is though, <laughs> no, no, because no, there, no, that that is under the assumption that they could have made a different trade for Chris Paul and got a better outcome that fixes those problems. That, no, the other outcome was sending him to Golden State for Jordan Poole. That is not a better outcome that fixes those problems either. So the the reality is there is no answer that fixes this problem. So you can keep Chris Paul and run back the same formula that doesn't work or keep those problems but get a better strength with Bradley Beal. Like, yeah. we're acting like they had a better option that could have fixed those issues no matter what those issues are going to remain. Yeah. The only well, how do you feel about this? I mean, I agree I agree with Isaac. Those those issues still remain, but like we have to be real. They couldn't have done anything better. Like there was nothing, yeah. nothing out there. Like if we're being real, if it's not Bradley Beal, ooh, do you want some other random player like who's beat up and about to be out of the league? Like, there's no way. There's no way around this issue. And I think that what they did, I respect it. I don't know if I 110 percent agree with it. Because it, it will get you in very dangerous zone and very dangerous territory. But it's either you like just let go of CP3 or receive an All Star in return, while having like maintaining some of your draft picks in the future with all these. How many? How many pick swaps was it? Was it like six four. second rounders or four? It was so six second four. rounders and four first round pick swaps. That is what's terrifying to me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The no trade clause. And the pick swaps, because like Bradley Beal, like that, that's, that's the only thing that I can't wrap my head around fully because you're at the mercy of this dude. (laughs) (laughs) Like the entire future relies on him. So I don't know. Who's running point? Who's running point for them in the playoffs? They're going to do point Booker. I mean, Booker. And now, and is Devin Booker best used when he's running point, trying to get everybody else involved? Or is he best used when you say, hey, go go do your best Kobe impression and you <laughs> let him like be legendary or whatever? We'll see. I I agree he's incredible off ball, but maybe maybe there's a gear that he can unlock there. He's not a bad passer. Maybe he has a, he's not James Harden, but maybe he has a Harden type gear where he can switch to point guard and unlock a new part of his game. And if that's the case and he can be just as good of a player as a point guard, Beal is going to provide more value than aging Chris Paul, so maybe that duo has a higher ceiling. Yeah, exactly. And a couple of years ago, Devin Booker averaged like seven or at least super close to seven assists back when mm-hmm. the Phoenix Suns were super trash. And, he and he's way better now. Skills. Yeah, exactly. And so being way better now with those threats, the floor is going to open up a lot more. Um, the only, like, and I don't, my only issue with them is like, I don't know if they have the right coach to like extend or maybe even overextend sometimes your star players capabilities of like being a straight up distributor like frank well yeah. i don't know i you can talk about this but like i yeah, don't know right. if he's the right coach for but a creative offense they kept kevin young who was like their offensive coordinator from the past regime he stayed and he's gonna run the offense for frank vogel so i think that's gonna be a good pairing frank vogel is a defensive mastermind who's gonna reinvigorate deandre ayton probably then you have kevin young to keep the phoenix suns offensive identity there I'm. I don't have an issue with the coaching on that end. Yeah. So. But if I it was just Frank Vogel, I'd agree because Frank Vogel was not equipped for that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's a, that's a great point. That's a great point. To let's make, uh, so. let's flip. Let's grade this for the Wizards now because I know Donovan has some opinions. This so is, the Wizards yeah. finally moved off of Bradley Beal. It was too late, but keep in mind this is a new regime who, as soon as they came in, decided to do it. It's not their fault. The old GM is an idiot. 
what do you grade it from that perspective of like yeah a C I don't I don't think it's a, a great trade um like you get Landry Shamit all right cool like he's just he's just there he's relevant in this trade <laughs> yeah the second round picks I can I can send five hundred thousand dollars to anybody and get a and get another second round pick those things don't like move me if I'm yeah, if I'm if I'm Washington if I'm starting a rebuild the pick swaps the pick swaps are interesting but I think it's very interesting that out of this trade and even the subsequent one that they made with Chris Paul, you trade your franchise player and you don't get a like a legitimate first round pick that is yours. Because even the pick that they get from Golden State is seven years into the future and it's top 20 protected. Yeah. So it's not like I, you still don't get a great draft pick out of this and you're at the mercy of how good is Phoenix in the future. So it's like, you give it eh. wait, is the twenty thirty pick from Golden State? Yes, yeah, twenty thirty. Yes, damn. The they, they have a they have a they have a twenty thirty pick. They have a twenty thirty pick from Golden State that is top twenty protected, and then they have a twenty thirty pick swap with Phoenix. Yeah, the thing is though, these trades, these first round picks aren't necessarily like they're probably not going to be taken by the Wizards. These are long term trade assets that'll get moved around by multiple teams multiple times, and it's appealing because that's going to be post Steph. So. That's a good asset. They're going to trade that again for a good player at some point. Top Man. 20 protected. Yeah, that's yeah, that that skewed that's, my that perception a little bit. Like, but at the same time, like what can you do, bro? Like this is yeah. no trade that's clause is literally cancer and this is yep. like the best that they could have done. So, considering that good, and then my grade overall, I think I'd have to be like a B. Like there's nothing you could have done worse. You could have done I agree. Worse. Straight B. It's not What's their new GM's name? Is it Mike Winger? I don't Clippers? know his name. I think so. I think, <laughs> I think so. it's Mike Winger. He's their new GM. It's not his fault that the last brain dead regime didn't trade him last year and gave him the fattest contract in the NBA with a no trade clause, something no other NBA player has. With that context, he came in. All he could do is say, okay, well, it's too late, but we have to start somewhere and just get the rebuild going. It should have been last year when Wimby was on the board, but he can't help that. So from that perspective of, Year one, all you can do is look forward and take the best case scenario in front of you. B plus, B, like, they weren't going to get a good return for Bradley Beal. It was impossible. With a no trade clause, if the deal gave them too much, Beal would say, no, I'm not waive my no trade clause. You got to let them keep yeah. some stuff. So it's, it's kind of like the last deal where it's not a good outcome. On paper, it's a terrible return. But in, the reality is they were all going to be bad returns. So it's the best they could do. And they made the smart decision to just get rid of them and start the rebuild from the best case they could. I don't know what I'd want them to do better. They're just, I don't, they're, 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 they're money laundering. That's what they're doing. <laughs> I, I, I really believe that. And we, like, whenever we go through all of these trades, I look at the entire haul that Washington got back and I have no I have no no evidence to believe that you guys are actually trying to win basketball games in the future. I think that they are laundering money, and that's like their main thing. But what have they done better? Bradley Beal has a no trade clause and makes fifty million dollars a year. They weren't going to get stars or great young prospects for him. Do you think it would be? Would you have, would you have rather like kept Bradley Beal? No, you got to start a yeah. rebuild. Like we all know, Bradley Beal should have been traded. It should have been last year, but it wasn't. So the new guys said it's not optimal, but. All we can do is is take the sunk cost of losing out on that value and just move forward. Yeah, it's, I it's need to know really what the exact deal there. Miami had on, on the table. And I know, I know, like I just, I just curious. I know Bradley chose Phoenix over Miami. Yeah, right? that's and, the thing. And, and and again, that no trade clause is crazy. But like, that's I just want, I just want to know what it is. I'm I bet curious. it was better. You're right, it was better. But Bradley said, "I want to go to Phoenix." So they had to send to Phoenix. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, he's running away. He from literally had them boys handcuffed ankle strapped and he was whipping them like Whoa. it was some <laughs> like it was it was just an it's absurd crazy you know? that's how that's how screwed the washington wizards were they couldn't do a damn thing about it so it's like with all this going on and with the fake picks and all these second rounders it's like okay at least you got something that you can kind of yeah. cook with He's the most negative contract in the NBA right now. It's damaging to have Bradley Beal. That's why you guys aren't high on the Suns trade as much. So to get out of that and be able to go into a rebuild and get some positive assets in return, like, it's not bad at all. And also, I mean, he, we, his, what's up? 
we're grading this trade alone, but the reality is this trade is very connected to the next one we're going to grade. Yes. The reality is they netted Jordan Poole out of this. So, like, getting Jordan Poole for Bradley Beal isn't the worst thing in the world. You traded the worst contract in the league for the second worst contract in the league. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jordan Poole is going to be fine when he's able to go to a team where he's not in that role behind Steph Curry. Like, are he's a you, good player. He needs time to be in a place that fits him better. Are you optimistic about Jordan Poole going to a place where there are no rules and he's going to get to chuck all night long? That's what he's built for. Yeah. <laughs> That's Jordan Poole. No, no, he's no, 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 best. No. Him? Bro, I, I need to see Kyle Kuzma get paid 30 M's a year and hoop alongside, Bert, Jor, alongside so Jordan Poole. Nasty bro. That'll be the nastiest <laughs> brand of basketball ever. <laughs> Ever. Okay, let's let's we'll get into this. Let's formally move on to the next trade. The next trade we got a great from both sides is the continuation of this trade, where the Wizards sent Chris Paul to who else was in the trade? Was it just Chris Paul going out? It was, it was just Chris Paul. Okay, so he sent Chris Paul to the Golden State Warriors in exchange for Jordan Poole and a 2030 first round pick. Was was there additional draft compensation? It was so it was Chris Paul. Chris Paul goes to Golden State. Washington gets back Jordan Poole. Ryan Rollins, a 2027 second round pick, and then the 2030 first round pick that is top 20 protected. Okay. So that essentially means all of you we have to view this in connection to the last trade. Yes. So they essentially traded Bradley Beal for Jordan Poole, two draft picks, and Ryan Rollins, who was a second round pick last year. Not a bad return. I think this is. Chris Paul is worthless to a lot of NBA teams, and they got. <laughs> say what you want about Jordan Poole. I don't love him either. But they got a young asset who has potential and a first-round pick for an aging Chris Paul who a lot of teams would have just bought out. The guys the guys who leave Golden State, like James, is one of the reasons why I'm fairly low on James Wiseman. If you cannot thrive in that situation, especially Jordan Poole, where they were ready to give him the keys to, to the second unit, right? Be baby Steph, all of this stuff. It's not like it's not like they were handcuffing him the way that they're doing Kaminga or Moody and they're not giving him playing time. Jordan Poole had every opportunity to shine in Golden State and play alongside the easiest person in the league to play next to in Steph Curry. Maybe Jokic, right? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he was unplayable. Unplayable in the playoffs because he's out here just running around being just idiotic all the all the time i i i'm not high on jordan Poole going to washington where he's not going to have any type of structure and he's just going to chuck you don't have to be you don't have to be but him in a first round pick has more long-term value than chris paul i'll tell you that yeah mo what's your grade for this mo? Yo. uh for the wizards yes for the wizards yeah for the wizards this has to be for the wizards i would say like holistically like a b but for the wizards in this strict interaction it has to be an a because you got a 24 year old who is the exact type of player that you need as an organization when you're going through pure mayhem in terms of just like reshifting and remolding the entire infrastructure of your team. Whether he like pops or he flops, it doesn't really matter. You just have a body to have people watch. Yeah, his potential. Exactly. It's Chris Paul. I see Madonna's face. He's like, what? It's Chris Paul. He's 38 and has no long-term value, and they got a young guard for him. That is yeah. a W. Like, this is a great trade for them. Yeah, exactly. Like, regardless great of the Great trade is wanna... a stretch. No, it's an what? incredible trade. Great trade is not anything of a stretch. They are going to run... I need I need to pull up this, this tweet. Bro, so the I, roster so can... issue is irrelevant. They're going to be the worst team in the league on purpose. They are paying <laughs> a dude... You are going to have the worst team in the league, and also have Next. one of, and also have one of the worst contracts in, in the league at the Who same cares? time. They at have the so same much cap space; it doesn't matter. Yeah, Who that's cares? not the. Who's going to Washington? Yeah. Listen, we talk, we talk about all the teams. It's the same as saying like, "Oh, the Minnesota Timberwolves have a whole bunch of cap space." Nobody's no, no, going no. to Minnesota. Nobody's going to to Washington. I understand that you like you would like to have flexibility. Every NBA team wants to have flexibility. Washington. Washington needs to do something a little bit different. I think for them, getting an erratic 24-year-old who is just going he's <laughs> going to he's going to be like like we are going to watch the Washington Wizards next year and it's going to be very similar to how the Houston Rockets have been playing basketball for the last 2 years. 
Bro, yeah, we're, they're year one of a rebuild. You, I, I'm, when I say they have cap space, yeah. I'm not saying they're going to use it to get stars. It just means that Jordan Poole's contract is irrelevant because it's not going to hamstring them in any way. They're, they're yeah. doing nothing with that money. It doesn't matter. They're losing games on purpose. There's steps in order to like every NBA fresh, every NBA organization tends to go through their motions. And every 10 years, they go through a cycle of being ass, being good, contenders, and being mid and stuff like that. Washington Warriors were just cursed with the most. <laughs> I don't want just bad people in the front office who just loved being mid. And this is their time <laughs> to shine and be really bad. And you have to go through the motion of just making moves that don't move the needle. But you make these moves are seeds placed that will eventually move the needle. So next year, when they're in place, to let's say they go ahead and get the number one overall pick. And the projected number one overall dude is like some dude named Isaiah Collier. That like this Jordan Poole trade or any or anything helps that. If and the point, if if the point that you being, guys are making... If mm-hmm. the point that the if the point that you guys are making is that Jordan Poole makes the Washington Wizards worse and helps them no, and helps and helps them lose games, then yes, then oh yes. Oh my god, bro! First of all, you're acting like Jordan Poole is Frank Nittolkina. Jordan Poole <laughs> has potential. Jordan Poole didn't work out in Golden State partially because he got laid the fuck out by the team's veteran leader before the season started and ruined their team chemistry. The, the season before, we were all like Jordan Poole is a foundational piece. Gets knocked out. Now he's bad. I don't think the Queens was there. Down, no, <laughs> like, Liverpool has yeah, lots of potential. He's, you're saying they gave the keys as a six man behind Steph. He's an on ball creator that was fitting into their system the best way he can. But he's best when he's running pick and rolls and creating all things offensively. When you give him those touches, maybe he doesn't come good. Maybe he becomes Jordan Clarkson. We'll see. But there's a chance that he becomes a legitimate creator with the ball in his hands that has value and isn't a star, but is a really good player. It's better to have that and take that chance than to just have a Chris Paul that you probably cut for nothing. Like that's a good return for a player that doesn't have a lot of value. Yeah, exactly. Pool has. You're gonna see a lot of eleven be... for twenty eight nights out there. And, good, and it won't and... matter. It, won't, <laughs> it has no consequence because they're gonna be bad anyway. Yeah, eleven so for twenty eight or twenty five for twenty eight, they're still getting top three. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But if it's you see that, a, if you see him shoot good, you take that with a, not a grain of salt, but you take that. You take that, and then you see where he potentially might fit in with your future. That's the entire thing. He's young, and the potential still there regardless. That's yeah. all it is. When you're is. in this potential. position where you're starting a rebuild, you just got to throw darts at the board and see what sticks. And Jordan Poole is a worthwhile dart to throw. Like That is a, a bet that has potential. Yeah. Nah, I disagree. <laughs> I just, so you just hate that man damn How do you <laughs> even con- it's not even worth the risk you should yeah. be in china <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly god man uh, okay though but uh i didn't give a grade i guess an a like i don't i think it's a, a great trade it's CP, an a. It's they, they an turned a. cp3 they turned nothing into something yeah let's grade this from the warriors perspective because this is a weird ass move for the warriors that isn't horrible but it's weird it's like you can see it, but CP3 is like the quite literally the inverse of Warriors <laughs> basketball in terms yeah. of how they like to move and all sort of their stuff. Yeah. Best and way so I can it's say just, it is weird. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're good. It's weird. Like the last time I saw a guard who's it not even a similar mold to CP3, but like he likes to have the ball in his hands. It's like I don't know, Sean Livingston, like who's who's deadly in the mid range. That's it, bro. That's it. Yeah. So it's weird. Best I can say it is it makes no fucking sense. But if you think about it hard enough, you can figure out a way to make it make sense in your head by saying they're trying something different and they're going, they're zigging when everyone's zagging or no, they're zigging when you'd expect them to zag because they always zag. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just different from what you'd expect from Warriors basketball. But if you view it as like they're changing up their style, it could make sense. I I don't know what to grade this. But, <laughs> but like, I can kind of see the vision. I think for them, I think the person who honestly benefits the most out of this is Jonathan Kaminga. I think okay, because I think like for Chris Paul to thrive in this backup point guard in this backup point guard role, you throw Kaminga in there and have Chris Paul teach him how to navigate a pick and roll, and have his athleticism, him being an actual lob threat, and maybe turn him into like a uh, DeAndre Ayton light. Type, yeah. type of thing you might you might be able to unlock something and just in terms of like a lot and <laughs> i yeah, yeah. I in, ter- in terms I of it. like how he's working with chris now. paul yeah 
let's see like he might you might be able to figure out a little something and just get a little bit more out of him but okay. outside but that's like one of the only pluses that i see and it's just a weird fit because would you finish the game with like chris paul steph clay wiggs and dre like you're small if you Good. do that you're yeah, small. i think you don't have to yeah I think on the court, this trade is like it's a so-so thing. It's more so you have to see what this trade does outside of the court, which is like the contract stuff. And obviously, he has a lot shorter of a contract compared to Jordan Poole. And so this gives him all the flexibility in the world in the next few years. And that's like the biggest thing about it. So I guess in my mind, they saw that, hey, we get to free ourselves from this treacherous Jordan Poole contract. And we have an opportunity to bring someone on who can be useful to us not only on the court with like, you know, John Kaminga and Moses Moody and setting things straight and feeding Kevon Looney instead of him just standing there awkwardly sometimes. Like they can just <laughs> go ahead and throw them in and add another layer of our offense and throw teams off and have something that's unschemable or whatever. So I'll it's give cool. this a C plus, maybe B minus if I'm being generous, because it's not a great move. It doesn't enhance their strengths like you want a lot of deals to do. Like every team has an identity. You want them to do something that can strengthen that identity normally. This goes against what they stand for normally. But if you think back to last year, <laughs> their starting lineup <laughs> their starting lineup was one of the best in the league still. Like it was incredible when they were healthy. Their starting lineup ran through everybody. The problem is they got no bench production cuz Jordan Poole got knocked the fuck out, forgot to play basketball. John Kaminga <laughs> Didn't make a leap. Moses Moody wasn't quite ready. Wiseman didn't give him anything. They lost GP2 for first half of the year. Otto Porter wasn't there. Like, they never got that bench production they had in their championship year. So, they didn't need to make a move in their starting lineup. We know that group is going to be amazing. So, the answer is, how do you fix the bench? And I think getting one of the best playmakers of all time, who's washed, granted, to run that second unit and potentially be very overpaid to do so, but be there to fix your exact one weakness... It could work. It's, it's strange. It's a weird way to get there, but it could be like a really smart move that ends up working despite being very unconventional. Yeah. It's so weird. It's uh, that's it's kinda, weird that's the only way I think any of us can describe it. And it, I really just have to see how it looks to really grade it and get like an actual view on how this is going to go. It's, I was shocked. I was so shocked when I, you opened up before and you're like, Chris Paul to the Warriors. What What, what is yeah, going on? What? He's it's, seeing him it in felt a two K is so wrong. It does is weird. Yeah. Though, so I think think about this way: if he made two million dollars, it'd be great because you'd be like, oh, he just plays in the backup and he doesn't close games, or he does depending on the matchup. He, they can limit his minutes, and he can just run that second unit to make him better. If it was a better minimum signing, we'd all be like, great, right? You don't yeah. have to play him. Just exactly. view it the same way, because honestly, money is completely irrelevant to this team because they're paying a ridiculous luxury tax bill regardless. So even if they didn't have him, they're not going to have cap space. So like, it barely matters. They're going to be a second apron team no matter what. So if you pretend the money doesn't exist, if he's playing for free, like oh why not? Doesn't got to close games. He doesn't have to in reality either. The real question is: Would you guys have done the same thing and traded away Jordan Poole, a twenty-four year old for a thirty-eight year old? That age gap is insane. Well, yeah, kind of. So you had Maybe. to. You had to make. A move after after what happened at the at the start of last season, like Jordan Poole and and Draymond Green couldn't coexist for another year, and everybody kind of said for the entire time, like, "Hey, this kind of like that punch messed up our entire season," and you saw you saw the effects that it had on on their defense, on the second unit, on on their whole chemistry, and you turned a title team and a team that won the championship that was down two one into a team that couldn't win on the road because they just weren't connected. So, yeah, somebody had to go. And it's probably going to be the guy who's only been here for three years rather than the defensive anchor who's been here for a decade. Yeah. It sucks that they went out They went out like that. And, damn, Poole, you got punched and you got shipped out of there. That's tough, man. <laughs> you're just yeah. – you're literally the Stay losing. Out. Yeah, exactly. And so – now, I guess it's just all about how they decide to... I, I also... I agree with you in, ter in terms of, like, this could also be a huge boost for John Kaminga and Moses Moody because I think that's, like, one of the main things that you want to get out of this trade. I think I saw some... I think I saw something, a report out, 
It's one of those mostly relevant points. You know how role players request trades and stuff like that? I could be wrong, <laughs> but I feel like I saw something about that with Jonathan Kaminga. And so if you see that, you you know what I'm saying? You have these lottery picks who you could have traded a long time ago before you even won the NBA trade. I mean, the NBA uh, championship in 2022, I believe. So now that you kept them and they're still doing a whole bunch of nothing because you're giving them no minutes, like it's like now or never with them, you know? So yeah, yeah. it's just really I awkward. Think, I think for them, it's not necessarily giving up on Jordan Poole because they had a rough year. I don't think they're reacting that harshly. I think it's more, like I said, they knew their starting lineup was great, but their bench was ass. That bench was led by the backup point guard being Jordan Poole, and he's just not really equipped for that role. He's not a playmaker, and they need somebody to elevate that, or at least that's the way they felt, is that they could sacrifice him to get a guy they think that can fix that one issue. And they, they see Steph as probably... It doesn't matter about building long-term because Steph is their window. Mm-hmm. Whatever comes yeah. after, after Steph comes rebuild. So, like, you're all in on this thing. So you can sacrifice that if it means optimizing the team for Steph's window and fixing their biggest strength. And there's the locker room issue where the chemistry was ruined because, as I've said multiple times, Jordan yeah. Poole was knocked the fuck out before the season started. So, yeah. And Draymond said give. himself in the podcast, you know, like after a catastrophic, a catastrophic event like that happens, you can't walk up to – he didn't drop his name, but it was clear as they like – you can't walk up to certain people and talk the same because now you have a clear dent in that relationship. And whenever you're talking to someone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like whenever you're talking to someone like that, like it right just now. you can't you can't you can't <laughs> clear out the kinks anymore. And that's yeah. why that's sort of that's how we explain the least as to why they seem sloppy and super inconsistent throughout the year. You just can't move the same anymore. Like literally, nothing will ever be the same. And they had to bite that bullet, and they are investing all their time into the greatest point guard of all time and Steph Curry. And this is what they should be doing. So, yeah. Yeah. I go B minus. I, th- I think as I'm talking through it, the downside isn't really there because either way they're locking in this team. If it doesn't work out, not the biggest deal in the world. Upside is they find a creative way to fix their biggest issue. I'm cool with it. Yeah, exactly. You get money. You don't believe you, you free yourself from Jordan Poole. So yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I think it's a. I'll rate this a B. It's great. I gotta, I'll give that. I gotta see yeah, it for sure. I I don't. I still don't know what to give it. You don't like anybody's moves ever this year. You're just yeah. you hate all these trades. No, I, I don't. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's, it's good or bad. It's just really weird. It's it's very unorthodox, yeah, and I don't. Yeah. I just don't have There's anything. No way you I don't have a definitive grade right now. Talking about. Yeah, next trades are straight W's for everybody involved. I think. Yeah. So let's move on to that third big trade this week crazy these all happen within like the same like 72 hour period the next big trade was a three-way trade between the memphis grizzlies boston celtics and washington wizards who Damn. we'll start from the wizards perspective because you know they got rid of bradley bill they clearly committed this rebuild next up was chris hops for Zingis, who was a pending free agent who had a player option who was deciding until the last minute whether or not he was an opt-out and go to the free agency route and sign with somebody outright or opt-in and get traded to somebody that he can have one more year with and potentially extend with or test free agency next year. They ended up going the route of finding him a trade partner so they could trade him and get something for him instead of him walking for nothing. So last second, he opted in and got traded to the Boston Celtics. After the first version of this deal fell apart, they ended up doing this three-team trade where the Boston Celtics get Kristaps Sporzingis and two first-round picks. And the Wizards get Tyus Jones, a second-round pick, and Danilo Gallinari. And the Damn. Memphis Grizzlies get Marcus Smart. And uh, I forget what else. I think they just got Smart. It's the only thing that it's, matters. It's, it, uh, the Grizzlies just got Marcus Smart. The The Wizards got Mike Muscala as well. Yeah, Mike Muscala too. Ooh, so lots to dissect. Let's start from the Wizards' <laughs> perspective. You know, they could have lost KP for nothing. And they ended up bringing back Tyus Jones, who could either be a point guard to keep them stable as a team or another person to trade in the future for a first-round pick at the deadline. I see that as an absolute win because KP could have left for nothing. Yeah, uh, a minus, a, yeah, a minus. It just, yeah, it just sucks that with all their moves that they've been making, like these are just like we we have no other choice type moves, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's it like, sucks. It's so not it's, great, yeah. but like he if, as a guy that could opt in, he effectively had a no trade clause as well. Yeah, because if he didn't like the deal, he could just opt out and test free agency. Yeah, exactly. So they were like. 
they're done for. So, I mean, I feel like bringing in a guy specifically like Tyus Jones, who's easily one of the best backup point guards, maybe the best backup point guard in the entire NBA, well, at least one of the top three or five or whatever. Um, having him alongside Jordan Poole and if Kyle Kuzma shines back and all them guys, like I think he'll help like establish some type of stability because if he wasn't there, then it would be a complete like shit show. Like it would be yeah. just yeah. straight AAU type vibes. But and I think go ahead. He's gonna average twenty and eight for the first half of the year, and they're gonna trade him at the deadline to a team that needs a good point guard. They're just they're just pushing back their asset. Like he could get them a first round pick later. So like yeah, you'd want them to get a first round pick now because they're rebuilding, but. Tyus Jones is going to be an asset that gets better with time as he gets more reps to prove himself. Yeah, I agree. I agree. A minus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Easy. it's good. You probably probably would try and like it's just I don't know. You you have the thirty fifth pick. It's like effectively, I guess it's like right on that range where it's still kind of like a first round pick. It's not yeah. too far back, so it's okay. A minus. Yeah, it's a good pick. What about from the Grizzly side? The Grizzlies shipped out Tyus Jones, who's a really good player. And they shipped out two first-round picks. One of them was the end of this round, and then one of them was a future pick. And they got Marcus Smart, who is like basically the Dylan Brooks replacement, but a guy who actually has some brains. Not bad. Oh, B plus. I, think I don't want to say flat. B plus. Uh, yeah. B f- I don't think the okay. So they filled a need by replacing Dylan Brooks and Marcus Smart, who is like the best version of Dylan Brooks. They keep that defensive identity by having a good guard defender next to John Morant. I think it's a great fit. Gives them some more playmaking. And just, you know, they had the last two defensive player of the years. I think Smart is a perfect fit there. And he's worth the picks. But Tyus Jones is also really good, so it's not the biggest talent jump in the world. It's like you're you're replacing somebody, but at what cost? I'll go B. But yeah. at the, I, think, I think where Marcus Smart's value comes in is that Memphis is still very, very young. And you get you mm-hmm. get an adult in the room. You get a veteran who's been True. there, who's been to the finals, right? You get Marcus Smart, who's been in all these situations. And even though that he's he, like he's not going to be the one that's leading your team in shots or anything, he knows how to play his role. Um, you know, alongside stars. So once Ja comes back, it's it's perfectly fine. So I think that that's kind of something that that they've been missing. And so now you have Marcus Smart and Stephen Adams as your two vets on the team who have, you know, experience and done this before. And I think that that's something that Memphis really, really needs. Yeah, exactly. Considering a yeah. couple of months ago, they literally threw like five or four first round picks at the Toronto Raptors face for OG Anunoby. They're on their knees begging the Raptors, Masai Ujiri, for OG Anunoby. And if you don't do that, and if they didn't do that, I think this is like, the second best thing they could ever ask for and possibly it might be even it might even work out for them even better because you're not giving up an egregious amount of picks it sounds like they're just pick happy they have all their picks so i think moments like this is where you're supposed to cash into it so it, it's not a good feeling like damn i just gave up two first round picks for fucking marcus smart but at the same time like marcus smart he comes with it. a lot of and inta- and inta- inta- talent intangibles <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just had to You could not say that. Word. Yeah. That I is true. <laughs> but like Donovan said, there's a lot of stuff that's not accounted for on the court, even though he's super talented, that the Memphis Grizzlies specifically as a team need more than anyone yep. else in the entire league. And so yep. this is like a huge W. This is a huge W for them. Bro, end of the season, we were talking about are, is their culture dying? Like, is a team built on culture? John Morant's doing John Morant things. Dylan Brooks is an imbecile. Like, <laughs> J- Marcus Smart is going to save their culture. Like, that matters a lot for this team. Yeah, Marcus it's Smart. a big, it's a big yeah. pickup for them. Yeah. No, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a minus. I, I agree. The and the thing is too, they were talking earlier in the off season, not in the off season because it's just started, but like a week ago, we saw reports that they were going to find Tyus Jones a trade to be a starting point guard. He probably asked for that. So, like, he probably wanted out from that role. So, I'm talking about, like, it's not the biggest talent upgrade. But if he didn't want to be there, you you don't want him there. You know what I mean? Like, so, they upgraded for sure. Is it worth the first two two first-round picks? You can decide. But the the fit is perfect. Exactly. And something I want to say, too, about, like, you know, overall team building and stuff like that. There's going to be times where you need to trade picks because there's no room or no necessary need for any individual position. Teams run across this all the time. And a lot of teams either force feed themselves into like awkward positions 
or they like key in cash in just the right amount of picks or maybe too much like they're what they tried to do earlier. And moments like this is where it's like, okay, two first, first round picks, considering what he does, it is worth it. A. For sure. Yeah, you, you acquire assets to eventually use them to upgrade your team. And this is the type of move you do. Exactly. Yeah. Trillions. Okay, let's talk about the most interesting part of this now. Oh, what, Mo, what's your grade? For the Boston Celtics? No, no, for the Grizzlies. I don't think you gave a grade. Oh, yeah, A. Yeah, I, I okay. gave them a grade. They're an A. They're okay, an gotcha. A. Okay, now we can move on to the most interesting side of this. The Boston Celtics. They traded their heart and soul, as everyone says, Marcus Smart, for Kristaps Porzingis and two first-round picks. On paper, that's incredible. Trading a high-level role player for a borderline all-star and two firsts? That's nuts. Yeah. What's no one grade? talks about him because he's in Washington, bro. That's a that's an A <laughs> trade to me, bro. It's A. What? Donovan, what's your I want to hear Donovan. This is a bad trade too. Tell me how this is a bad trade. You're the only one on the planet that's telling me this. No, 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 no. I mean, it's not an A though. It's not it's not an it's not an A. <laughs> oh my God. There's a level above A, and that's fleece. And that's what the Celtics <laughs> did. Like that's what they got. Right. This this trade is wow. For Brad Stevens. For Brad to get two first round picks and Kristaps Porzingis on this team, this that's crazy. That's, yeah. They, he listen. He learned from Danny Ainge so beautifully because Danny Ainge was out here <laughs> fleecing people for years, and Brad Stevens was, was like, "I see what you're doing. I got you. Right. I'll, I'll make you proud." <laughs> this is this is it's a knockout trade. The Celtics did the absolute best that they could. It's it's fantastic. I agree. A plus plus. So. The upside is KP fits beautifully. He's a really good rim protector who can space the floor, which fits on every team. But they have Robert Williams, who he can play alongside, because Robert Williams is the interior threat and KP is a legit spacer. They have Al Horford, who he can play alongside, and they can have two spacers as big men, which gives them crazy versatility and rim protection. Or he can be the only big on the court when they go small-ish with KP as a center. That gives them so much versatility, it's ridiculous. That, like... We, we knew they couldn't run it back, what they had last year. And this is how you throw a wrench into that offense and give themselves new looks on really both sides of the ball. It's a perfect fit. Yeah. The downside is Marcus Smart was their only good passer. And now they have no good passers. So that was already a weakness. They probably have some yeah. more moves to make. But as of now, they have no playmakers. I mean, yeah, yeah, you're really leaning in to Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White trying to, you know, run this offense. And, and I guess this is also the thing that we've talked about with Tatum a lot is that they have tried to make him into this all encompassing. Hey, we're going to run everything through you. You're going to set up the offense. This is their way of saying, Tatum, we're going to push you into these situations to be uncomfortable and we're going to really going to lean on, on him. So I think for Tatum. We're probably going to see maybe one of the best versions of Jason Tatum that we've seen uh, up, up until th- this far. I I know. Listen, I know he's not like I'm not expecting him to make some type of leap where he ends up at like James Harden where he's averaging eight, nine assists a game. But handling the flow of the offense, I think we're going to see a more comfortable Jason Tatum just because he's going to be in that position every single night. And I think and he's he's made some strides in his, in his yeah, playmaking. Yeah. So another little minor bump. My my that might be the difference. Okay, I uh I made a video two weeks ago where I talked about why this team isn't going to work because Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum as a duo are not either one of them high level playmakers, and they should I said they should probably trade Jalen Brown for a high level playmaker. I said in that video if they don't want to do that they got to trade Marcus Smart and find a way to get a point guard there because I don't think that they should be trying to make Jason Tatum into a point forward. That's just not his game, and. I like this KP trade, but if they don't make any other moves, I think they'll be fucked because that means they have to treat him or Jalen as playmakers. And I think that's the opposite direction they should be going. If they saw last year team play out and said, we need less passers, we need the more Jason Tatum passing reps, I think that's a complete wrong takeaway. So I'm not going to overreact yet because they have more moves to make. They can get a point guard in here by doing more trades. But that that, that, that hole is more glaring than it was before. And it was they, should have, they should have somehow, I don't know how this would have worked, but Tyus Jones on this roster would have been so nice. Screw sure. those picks. This would have been a beautiful A++ plus plus trade because this affects now. Of course, those picks are super nice and all that, but like that fills a direct void. Like, yeah, like you got KP and that 
just makes your roster somehow they're already like one of if not the most versatile roster in the in entire nba this puts them even over on top of that so but still like the same issue lies like about Jalen brown and jason Tatum, those two being the face of your team and you know i'm saying there being a real like deep dark hole of a true playmaker there and so it's just awkward still but it's like very enticing yeah. And again, it just lies upon the shoulders of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and what type of leaps can they make as individual mm-hmm. playmakers? You know what's yeah. crazy? The, the the first version of this trade they tried to do was sending Malcolm Brogdon out instead for Christoph yeah. Porzingis. That got vetoed because the the medicals on Malcolm Brogdon came back once the Wizards saw it, and they were like, "Oh, this guy's not healthy at all. His elbow's falling off the bone. We can't take him." <laughs> if that didn't get vetoed. They would have got KP for Malcolm Brogdon. It would have been an insane steal. And then I have a feeling they would have did the Tyus Jones trade for Marcus Smart. Because clearly the Grizzlies wanted Smart. So they could have had KP and Tyus Jones on this team. I feel I feel bad for Marcus Smart. I really I really do. Because Jalen Brown can't go left. And now Marcus Smart <laughs> has to go babysit John Morant. Like I, I feel bad for him because of that. Like that that really sucks. That really uh, sucks. Yeah. Well, the problem is he doesn't go left that well either. So like one of them had to go. <laughs> yeah. Like for true. all things, they all do a lot of things well. Neither one of them are just great dribblers, yeah. penetrators. Like that duo was the problem next to Jason Tatum, and something had to give. Like, well, could you fucking least... imagine if they would have got KP for Brogdon? But that would be insane. Disgusting. That would have been insane. And then, and then Tyus Jones and two first round picks were smart. They would have been cooking. But at least they put themselves in a position to like grab that true PG whenever like the second they come out in the market with these two first round picks. So yes, it sucks that they didn't land him, but they're even in, they're they're in an even better position to eventually land that. So I mean, it's a good move, and also KP is not gonna like he's not deathly attached to your roster because he's a free agent next year. So yeah, I mean, it works out all all around, all around, and if, for sure. Yeah, so yeah. it's a great trade. Good for them, man. I still think Jalen Brown's not going to work long term unless they somehow get a really high level point guard. But I don't know how they're going to do that. But we'll see. They're going to give Jalen Brown that super max extension in a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, man. Those are the yeah. three trades. We got the grades for. Everybody. Oh wait, you don't want to talk about the Clippers at all? I don't. The Clippers <laughs> didn't make a trade. The Clippers well, were in the original trade. Oh, they got vetoed. you're right. They didn't make that trade. I don't know why. Yeah. You, they were you supposed to get Malcolm Brogdon in that three way trade, but they said, listen, we have too many cripples already. We can't deal with the guy who has no <laughs> elbow. They sunk That's it. Hilarious. So, just real quick, would you give Paul George that $200 million extension? <laughs> no. No. Is Paul George up for an extension? I didn't even know that. No, he. I think he will be like soonest. I think he'll have an opportunity to sign that. It's nothing for Yeah, no. No, there's no there's no way I'm maxing Paul George and Kawhi. Mm, yeah. See I'm not doing it. Well, during the live stream, I was over here spraying the Paul George and Kawhi propaganda to Portland if Portland decided to unload the clip and give the Clippers every single thing that they have in their goddamn wallets. And I was like, that would be really fun. And that's something I would do with Portland if they're like stupid enough to try to keep Dame. Do that. Because Kawhi Leonard's trade value is not gonna be Weirdly enough, not that high. Yeah, we'll see, man. I don't even. I don't even want to get into the Clippers. There's so much at play there. Yeah, that's that's another podcast for another day. <laughs> Y'all know what time it is? Ooh. What time? Is it? I think it's TikTok time. Look at the crayon eaters. They're all around. The <laughs> crayons eating them. <laughs> As always, we're gonna start with the draft. You know, you know what it is by now. This time we're going to do a draft of only players that played with LeBron at some point. Let's and get into it. Every player is going to be in their prime. So this, this should be interesting. He's had to play with a lot of guys. I think I have the first pick. Mo had it first last time. So Donovan, your second. Mo, your third. Okay. Which sucks. His third is the place to be in this draft. but It really is. <laughs> okay. So let's draft NBA lineups with only players who played with LeBron at any point in their career. And everybody in their prime. Ooh, first pick is an interesting one. It can go a lot of ways. It's, yeah. Right. First pick, give me Dwayne Wade. Okay, cool. Listen, everybody's in their prime. Give me Shaquille O'Neal. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. I just forgot about Shaq. Oh, my God. Yep. Yep. He sold. Yep. Okay. He sold. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Okay. Damn. Naturally, give me 
Kyrie Irving and Dwight Howard. That's a nasty duo. Yeah, it's perfect. I can't believe I forgot about Shaq. Oh my god! All right, uh, we're just gonna we're we're just gonna start big. And don't do it. Don't give do me it. Anthony Davis. Fuck! Oh! Gross. You're nasty for that. You nasty for that. You nasty for that. Shaq and AD. My goodness! Come on. Now. Oh, I'm getting cooked. This sucks. All three. I have three centers written down. You guys took all three of them. You know who to pick next. <laughs> oh my god. This you sucks. know exactly okay. where to go next. Well, give me Carmelo Anthony. Okay. And I know that kind of sucks. Give me MVP Derrick Rose. Mm. Oh, he did play with D Rose. Damn, I forgot about right that. He, did. he played right. with D Rose. He did. That is okay. Okay, so for my let me get some shooting. Let me get Ray Allen. That's a good pick. Let me get Prime Ray Allen. That's nice. I like that a lot. All right, you got Prime Ray Allen. <laughs> I almost said THT to troll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, now this is where the draft is kind of like wide open-ish. So go ahead and give me... Oh, this is not a great pick or fit. But go ahead and give me Russell Westbrook. Okay. At my two. Oh, your two, and okay. Then, yeah, give me Russell Westbrook at my two, he and then not after us, you said what? He is not a shooting guard. He will shoot you out the game. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, <laughs> he keep is going. A shooting guard in this. So give me Russ, and then also give me Carlos Boozer at my four. Okay. Yeah, give me Carlos. What do you mean? Okay, like, he he was All nasty right, in the okay. Utah days. What? Listen, <laughs> do do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Construct your team the way you'd like. I would like. I need a three. Give me Brandon Ingram. Oh, I forgot he played a Brandon Ingram. That's good. Nice. Okay. Nice. Thank God Mo sold and picked Carlos Boozer. Give me Chris Bosh. Okay. Oh, I, was, I, I forgot was waiting. about Chris Bosh. I was waiting. Damn. He passed up on a Hall of Famer for Carlos Boozer. Yeah, I forgot about Chris Bosh. I have no idea. Damn. And then on my five, give me Ben Wallace. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, you recovered. You recovered. Recovery. That's good. All right. I need a point guard to bring all this together. Give me prime Rajon Rondo. It's a good pick. Damn, that is phenomenal. I forgot about Rondo. You play with the Lakers. Derrick okay. Williams was available, but Rondo's a good pick. Who is? You said Derrick Williams? Darren Derek. Williams. Oh, Darren. <laughs> Derrick. I was like, oof. I'm like, who the hell is Derrick Williams? Like, He's also available. Derek. He did play with him. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Anyways. So I need a shooter because my spacing is looking really sus right now. And go ahead and I guess you can go ahead and give me Danny Green for my three. Okay. I would have picked Shane yeah. Battier or Richard Jefferson or Kyle Corver, but Danny Green works. Or Kyle Mike Corver Miller. literally played. I literally. Oh, wow. Yeah. Kyle <laughs> you, Corver his audio just glitched for me. So <laughs> he was like. <laughs> or J.R. Smith. <laughs> No, no, I'd rather have Danny Green than J.R. Smith. Yeah, not J.R. Smith. I saw Prime J.R. Smith, I'm like, I'm good. Bro, but Danny Kyle Green Corbett, was a... Damn. Prime Danny Green is nice. Yeah. Prime J.R. Prime Danny Green almost won MVP. Don't sleep. What? We're sleeping on, on Prime J.R. What are those Smith. words? Prime Danny Green almost won MVP? What are you talking about? Yeah. Back in the, back in the Spurs era. Okay. Um, All right, let's listen to teams. So my team is Derrick Rose... <laughs> Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh, Ben Wallace. You recovered very I, nicely. Yeah. I you recovered watch. very Bleak. nicely. What a storyline. All right. I have I have Rajon Rondo, Ray Allen, Brandon Ingram, AD, and Shaq. I think my team fits very well together. I don't think it fits well at all. All right. I, think I got crazy. Kyrie Irving, Russell Westbrook, Danny Green, and then I have Carlos Boozer. That's what hurt me. <laughs> this team and I got worse. Dwight Howard. Yeah, that's you what hurt like me. Four non shooters. The, the Carlos Boozer hurt my, hurt my soul, bro. That hurt. That hurt. How did Damn. I sell the number one pick and then win by far? This is crazy. I won't say by, by far. far. Oh no, I won by far. You're not nah. scoring at the rim at all. I have Ben Wallace and Chris Bosh manning my defense. That does nothing to Shaq. I have AD. Anthony Davis yeah. and Shaq. You're yeah. not scoring at the rim. Like, it's not <laughs> happening. 
I don't I'm know. I have Dwayne Wade. I have, Dwayne I, Wade and, <laughs> I have Dwayne Wade. And I have Dwayne Wade and Derrick Rose attacking the rim. I think I'm scoring against anybody. You're not. You're not. That's fine. I'll just give it to Carmelo Anthony to hit the mid range where Shaq doesn't want to pull up on the pick and rolls. Mm. I got AD on him. <laughs> you got AD on Dwight. I'm not on Carmelo. And I got Russ Who's screaming go- at babies. <laughs> 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 uh, that's great <laughs> that's hilarious yeah okay next thing we're gonna do as always a tier list this time we're gonna stick to the theme of the draft a little bit and we're gonna do a tier list of nba young cores so these guys all of these teams have a new rookie in there so that'll make things a little interesting so let's put these nba young cores into a tier list first off the houston rockets they're okay, still so pending. I, yeah. So hmm. they can't hmm. be A at hmm. all or S. Yeah, I think B is fair. Yeah. A lot of potential, but they still got to put it together. Yeah, exactly. They have a lot of talent. Saying well, I would I doubted them before, but I think Amin Thompson kind of brings it together. I think they deserve B. Yeah, exactly. Sangoon, Jalen Green, and Armin Thompson. There's a clear future there. We just need to see a little bit of it on the court, but they're already way, way better off than how they were prior to this draft. I mean, yeah, but they still have Kevin Porter Jr. and Jabari Smith Jr. did not look great, so I might have to drop them down to a C. Hmm. Mo, what do you think? I think we should stay. We should stay at B. B it is. So. Next one, the Detroit Pistons. Ooh. I also I'll put this at, at a B. I really like Kate Cunningham. But he has to he has to stay healthy. I'm very concerned about his health right now. I mean he had one bad injury. He's not he's not Zion. I'm I'm, I'm a little concerned. That's my oh concern. My God, bro. <laughs> and that's why I could have gotten the paper cut, you would have been concerned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. I'm gonna give him A. I think the trio of Cade, Ivy, and Asar has crazy high ceiling. I think they deserve yeah. A. Yeah, add on Jalen Duran in that mix, and then what oh, they yeah yeah like they are definitely an A. I damn near want to put them S, but for now I'm gonna put them A. We I haven't mean, seen a full year of Cade and Ivy. Yo. Yeah, they once, maybe they should Cade, be S. What, no, once Cade makes that real star leap this season, then they can be S. But for now, yeah, A's exactly. fair. All right, the Washington Wizards. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Donovan. <laughs> now if y'all put this. In Johnny Davis, tier. Jordan Poole, <laughs> Denny this of Dia. Is, this is an F tier young core. Corey Kispert. This is the worst core I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing <laughs> worse, the only thing worse is the seven and fifty nine Charlotte Bobcats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're F for now, but it's first year for rebuild, so not a good start. This is trash. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cleaning the slate. <laughs> the Spurs. Well, this has to this, be S because you have Victor. It has got one B. They're S. Bro. It doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. Yeah, exactly. It's S. Like you have Victor, bro. S tier. Easy. All right, um, the Trailblazers. <laughs> I hate that I'm giving they have, them a good grade. They have. Bro, they have. A, they have a C tier. They have a C tier core because they I have, have a, a Scoot and Sharp is a good start. They have C tier. They have the oldest young core ever because they still got <laughs> Damian Lillard in the core. <laughs> this is C. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's okay. The Scoot and Sharp is an incredible start, but it's yeah. really two guys deep right now, so I'm fine with that. Simons is too old to be in the young core. <laughs> no, he's not. How old is he? He's on his second contract. He's not in the young core anymore. <laughs> bro, no, he's young as hell. If he's if he's 24 and younger, then he's not old, bro. All right, this I'm gonna is look it easily up. like a look it B+. Plus. Anthony Simons. B plus is not real B. What's the cutoff? 24. 24. He's 24 years old. Okay, it counts. We'll give him B. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Hornets. C tier. You really only have one guy, or oh, or yeah. I guess with, with and Brandon Miller. Miller. Uh, Bridges being a piece of shit really fucked him over and made. Yeah, I was about like, to say, Mister Twenty Four. He's not coming back this year. I think he is. So I don't. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. Bridges that. being a piece of shit really screwed him over. They're a C tier at best because they lost one of their core guys. Is what it is. Facts. Yeah. C easily. They got a lot of buildings to do. Terry Rozier, <laughs> Gordon Hayward, PJ Watson. It's not really moving anyone, bro. Yeah. The Thunder. S. Oh, th- S tier. S tier. S tier for sure. S. Shea, Josh Giddy's nice. Jalen Williams. He Listen, he could have made a late push for rookie of the year. Chet Holmgren's yep. coming back. They are nice. 
we haven't even seen Chet yet. They are they have a nice. 24-year-old legit superstar. A two second overall pick coming along the way. Two other really high-level guys. Uh, so it's what you want from a young core. Just picked up Carson Walker. Or Carson Wallace, too, who is highly yeah. touted. Bro, that's a W. Their their pretty is absurdly right. They're mm-hmm. winning. Nice. There's a lot of good young cores right now. It's interesting. We're at a there, yeah, there's a few years funny. where like there were some like premier young cores, like building with like Luca, Trey Young, whatever. And th- those guys kinda like aged out. So like last year there wasn't a ton of young cores. And it's starting to build up again. Yeah, this is the new this is this is called getting old, Isaac. Get used to it. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> what a fucking stray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to do another draft of a player draft. We're going to build a perfect player. We, last week, we did this with small forwards. Today, we're going to draft the perfect shooting guards. Okay, so, this will be fun. Okay. So, let's draft the perfect NBA shooting guards. Who went first last time? I th- I went first, so I got third. Donovan, you got, got first. Mo got second. Do I have first pick? Yeah, you got first pick. All right. So now we got body, shooting, finishing, passing, and defense. Okay. All right. I'm I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take this guy just because I really just want to get this category out of the way. Give me Devin Booker's passing. That's a good pick. Wait. And I, wait, wait, wait. You're taking Devin Booker's passing. Yes. Yeah. And now he's off the board. Okay. This is my turn. It's a strategic move. Yeah, it's your turn. How's it strategic? I'm out of loop with that. Okay. <laughs> Give me Clay Thompson shooting, whatever. Oh, I was about to take that. Damn. Yeah, Prime I'm like, Clay Thompson why? or like Clay Thompson now? <laughs> Clay Thompson will be a man. great shooter. He's I mean, Clay. Pfft. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that didn't sound too inspired. You you saw what he did in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, I did see what he did in the playoffs. You could have that shooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Give me... Hmm. Uh, this is a tough one. Give me Donovan Mitchell shooting. Want That's the full good. off the dribble package. That's good. And then... Hmm. Who's the best passer? I can, is Shea a shooting guard or is Giddy a shooting guard? That's so tricky. It depends on... See, for They're both my combo sake, guards. I want to screw you over. <laughs> Who is the shooting guard in this backcourt? I think it's Shea. Are we gonna go Shea? Listen, I will allow if you want either one of them as a shooting guard, I will allow it. Okay. I'm gonna assume uh, Okay, what are they listed at? Let's see if they're listed at. I don't want to get flamed for this. What is Shea? I think when we did the Shea draft, I mean the point guard draft, we included Shea. Shea's listed okay. at point guard. What is Giddy listed at? Giddy is power forward. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, see, that's what I'm saying, bro. You can. <laughs> Ugh, what the hell is this? I think Giddy's a forward. Oh, because Jalen Williams is a shooting guard, I guess? That's so disgusting. Yuck. <laughs> okay, uh, let me just like, not even think about either of them anymore. That just threw me off. Um, <laughs> What's the. Wait, real quick side, side note. Where was this at? What'd you look on? Basketball reference. Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> okay, and give me Anthony Edwards' body. Mm, Dang it! I love that. Dang I'll it! Out. Okay, I'm athletic That's and fun. I can shoot the lights out. Cool. Give me Marcus Smart defense. I think is he's he a point a guard. guard? I, I think he's, he's a point guard. Yeah. Well, he's. Are you? Is he's. I mean, I mean he's, pretty the, clear, he's pretty clearly their point guard. Yeah. <sighs> Damn. So y'all, y'all really doing this to me right now? I mean, okay. kind of playing by the rules, yeah. <laughs> it's not even a stretch. He's clearly their point guard. Man, it was lame. Oh my god, bro. Whatever. Okay. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, give me. Yeah, go ahead. Give me. Shaden Sharp body. He's athletic as fuck. Okay. Could have waited uh, on that, but that's an advantage. You could have. All right. Um, okay, I'm back at, back at the rotation. I have Devin Booker passing. Give me Desmond Bain defense. Okay, that's a weird pick. And give me CJ McCollum shooting. I like that. That's nice. Off the dribble is 
automatic. All right, so I got Shedding Sharp Body, Clay Defense. Who's yeah, play passing? Shooting. Or, my bad, yeah. Clay Shooting. There we go. That's where I fucked up my last time. All right, so whose defense do I want? Go ahead and give me Lou Dort defense. Oh, that's a good pick. That's good. That's good. Okay. Oh, I just had the picks. Okay. I had, I had a brain fart for a second. For shooting, I don't know how he fell to me, but he already picked shooting. Fuck. I was going to say Buddy Hilde. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> I already have that. What do I have again? I, have, I just have body and shooting. Uh, yes, you picked. Yeah, um, body and shooting. You have you have ant, uh, ant shooting. You have ant you body have ant and demon shooting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. For for defense, give me Paul. Oh, did you pick? No, you haven't picked that. For defense, give me Paul George. Okay. Oh, so lame, bruh. Damn. <laughs> so I have def- Why am I having such a brain fart? Wait, so wait, have- no, wait. Are we counting Paul George? Because we counted him in the small forward draft. Yeah. I don't know. He's definitely a shooting guard. I mean, Kawhi is a small forward. So did I just cheat last time? <laughs> yeah, but who cares? I mean, like, we allowed it. Okay. Yeah, who cares? He's de- definitely okay. a shooting guard. Like, objectively, he's a shooting guard. Yeah. So I have okay. finishing and passing left. Hmm. Finishing is a hard one. There's not a lot of, like, high-flying finishers at shooting guard. Do I want Jalen Brown's passing? Imagine. Please. <laughs> Looking at the shooting guard list right now. This is not a deep position, like, at all. I know. It gets kind of bleak after, like... <laughs> after, like a now? It's bleak now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking around the league, and I was like, who relax, are these relax, guys? Relax, relax, relax. Nobody say anything. Oh, my, am I forgetting somebody big? No, nah, just go. M- make your pick. I... CJ McCollum's there, shooting guard. Clearly, I'm forgetting somebody big. Are you finishing, and I need passing? Oh. Give me DeJounte Murray passing. Okay. All right. Cheating because okay. he's basically a point guard, but he was a two. Okay. That's uh, cool. So did we decide what Josh Giddy was or did someone already pick him? He's not a guard. He's, he's not a forward, a apparently. Guard. Dude, that's that's so BS. We all know this, but anyway. I mean, he, yeah, Jalen yeah, Williams is the two guard. Anyways. Yeah, that's so weird. Um. Anyways, I have... I have uh, finishing left and passing. All right. So for my, let's do finishing. That's the toughest one. There's nothing really like outstanding. It's very tough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the toughest one. But for finishing, damn, I would kind of, I kind of wish I switched with someone else. Um, but yeah, whatever. Actually, let's do passing for now. Let's do passing. Let's do passing. I think that's more valuable. Give me. Where's he going? Yeah, he was I just guess. give me go like ahead. five times before he makes it. Go ahead and give me. Go ahead and give me a uh, Tyler Hero passing. Whatever. Ew. Yeah, it's gross. Okay. It's gross. I know. Puke. All <laughs> right, we're gonna we're gonna double up here for finishing. Give me Jalen Brown finishing. Thought about and, that. Okay. And then for body, give me Jalen Green body. Jalen Green body. That's nice. I, I want I'm bodying you every single time. You can't defend I, me I for want shit. that. I want that athleticism. He jumping okay. out the gym. <laughs> He's jumping out the gym. I wish I wish we had the like the athleticism under like finishing. Cause I wanted him for I I wanted some combination of him and Jalen Brown as like finishing and body. Yeah. Mm. All right. So right if I can have Jalen Brown's strength with Jalen Green's uh vert. That's what I need. Okay, I can see that. Wrap mine up. Give me Jordan Poole finishing. He has some nice. Your team is your lays. player's awful. No, he's not. What do you mean? I got Jordan play Poole shooting? Finishing? We'll to the sharp we'll body. To the Give me Kyrie what? Irving finishing. Oh, we moved him oh, back to a shooting guard. Okay. I mean, is Luca a shooting guard? Look, this is okay. Now we're playing hopscotch. You can right play now. with two. You can play with two. <laughs> with two points. We're Somebody has to be the two. Wow. No, it's just, just, I don't know. All right, Should I not pick him? This. I is... feel like I feel like he's more of a point guard. Okay. Well, is Dejounte Murray allowed then? I think when it that's why I was like Dejounte Murray, but <laughs> it's like 
what, what I, mean, I guess it's like it's not in the spirit of the rules, man. Okay, should I, I pick know. somebody else? Let's see who I else was is picking a like guard? pure like shooting guards. Like okay, there's no like confusion yeah, yeah, whatsoever. Don't, don't don't cheat the game. Okay. Yeah, jackass. So you just take back Dante Murray too. <laughs> I'm not going back into Dante Murray. I know. <laughs> Give me Zach Levine finishing. There you go. There you go. That's that's who I thought you were going to take last time. Yeah, yeah, I thought about it. Nice. My layups are sexier. <laughs> <laughs> so I have Anthony Edwards' body. That's good. Donovan Mitchell shooting. Zach Levine finishing. Uh, Dejounte Murray passing. Oh, did you get defense? Yeah, Paul George defense. Oh, okay. Nice. Your body gotcha. is, is is what's getting me. So I got shaded yeah, sharp body. I'm athletic as hell. <laughs> I got Clay Thompson shooting, Lou Dort defense, Tyler Harrell passing, kind of random, and Jordan Poole finishing. All right. I have Jalen Green body, CJ McCollum shooting, Desmond Bain defense, uh, Devin Booker passing, and Jalen Brown finishing. Desmond Bain nice. defense is hilarious. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. Why'd you wow. pick him? He's not a lockdown <laughs> defender. <laughs> no. I, he's, he's, the, he's the first name that, that came to my mind. <laughs> I was thinking about defense. Uh, he's built like me he's strong he's strong <laughs> <laughs> little arms oh, okay next thing we're gonna do let's add some comedy into this bitch it's been too serious okay we're gonna bring back a segment what does this NBA player look like he would do if he wasn't a basketball player this could go off the rails real quick yeah well just don't be crazy <laughs> let's keep it in line <laughs> so I don't know if hook. I want to do this if I can't be crazy <laughs> <laughs> fine be you i'll edit it out if you say anything crazy <laughs> if you see any hard cuts it's because i got out of line right. what would this M- <laughs> what does this nba player look like he would do if he wasn't a basketball player trey young trey i don't young. know trey young what would trey young do he, you know what he would do Trey Young would be a dentist because he got them big old veneers. That's that's what he would do. He, he's a veneer spokesman. Really? That's hilarious. I kind of feel I think like Trey Young would run the shit out of a daycare. I think he would mm. be a great daycare worker. See, I feel a soft side with Trey Young. He has a lisp and he kind of talks funny. So I imagine him serving oh, me ice cream on a hot ass day. I imagine working at Brewster's or something like that. <laughs> it, just sounds, it just fits him. <laughs> the ball spot, you know what I'm saying? It's like, seems like a chill dude. He's, he's ice tray, right? What's wrong here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so am, I, am I out of pocket? No, I'm not. He called him ice tray, so it's like, he called him ice tray for a reason. It's an extra calling. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> oh, please tell me what's wrong. I'm so serious right now. Oh my god! I'm not even a prediction or I'm, oh crying. I'm crying. I'm crying too. Stop making me cry. <laughs> Show me ice cream. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy. My stomach hurts so bad. <laughs> that was the craziest thing you've ever said. <laughs> That's so random. <laughs> but is it not accurate, though? I don't know. <laughs> you can see the vision. It's not oh, that crazy. I can't breathe. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, is that it? Is that is that the TikTok? I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, my no, God. We have uh, five more names. I'm not going to survive. I'm dead, bro. I need a tissue. I'm so, my face is so wet. I think that's it. I think we should cut it after that one. <laughs> we can't. We got to yeah. keep going. Yeah, I, I can't make content. it. I can't make it. <laughs> Bro, y'all have seen me die laughing like four times now. This was the hardest ever laugh. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> because he has a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the correlation? Stop. It's crazy. Uh, stop. Uh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm oh. crying for real. Tears now. Stop. Oh my god. Let's oh part god. this up. Oh god. What? Okay. 
Yeah. That's wild. What? It's not like super disrespectful. It's just hilarious. Cause like, <laughs> how did that pop into your head? <laughs> oh, man. Right, okay. Right. What? Whew. Recover. <laughs> yeah. We all wiping Oop, tears, wiping our noses. <laughs> uh. That's hilarious. Okay. What? Next one. Luka Doncic. Mm, Luka Doncic. I'm still recovering. <laughs> So I'm thinking I, about I food know. service. Me too. I was say, <laughs> yeah, chef. I'm thinking about some food service. I immediately saw him in the kitchen. He's a, like yeah. a set worker on The Bear, the show. <laughs> I like he's that. over there oh making, goodness. he's over there whipping up elite sauces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is fucking <laughs> cooking that shit to death, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the, the finesse he works with on the court? He's a culinary genius. Yeah, it makes sense. He's too coordinated not to know what sauce goes where. <laughs> no, he does. He looks like a he looks like the judge off a of chopped. Or even then, he looks like he honestly he would be a baker. He would be a fantastic baker too. Ooh. Yeah. No, nah, this man's this man's made for food, I can tell. He would make the meanest cupcakes and also croissants <laughs> if that was his bag too. <laughs> croissants is for sure his bag. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Donovan, you can just hit this one out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I took that one out. Exactly. I'm back. That's a great way to go about I'm it. I'm back. Okay. Devin Booker. D-Book. D-Book like is selling like, cars. He's mm, selling I'm cars. I'm about to say he's selling me some. He, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, he's some type of salesman. Okay. I think he'd work in an auto body shop. I think he'd be in the first yep, Fast and Furious too. movie looking real 2002 L.A. That that too. Mm, he's wor- he's like working. That. With, he's some type of mechanic. He's a mechanic. Yeah, yeah. I you like see him on, on Midnight Club. Everything. Yeah, he's the guy in a Fast and Furious movie. It's like the tech wizard that somehow knows like every part of the machines on a lot of the cars, and like yeah. somehow that moves over to weaponry and shit. He's yeah. ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. He like his old school car. He he like his old he likes his old school cars. So that's definitely a way to go. Yeah, he's always saying shit like nothing beats American muscle. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> <sweaty. laughs> right, next one tyler hero oh uh, he looks like he's selling me phones at verizon wireless bro like <laughs> he's like trying to become my main no he's a he's a tattoo bro. artist oh that's crazy Ooh. he he's a he's a tattoo no, artist i'm about to blow your mind he works at the surf shops by the beach where he sells you like towels and stuff he, oh my god I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I know how Tyler Hero sounds. He works at another place. He doesn't. He doesn't work at a surf shop. I, <laughs> oh, he's I, on the other side of town. Yeah, he that's, that's not his demo. <laughs> Instead of a surf shop or surf shop, it might be one of them dudes who rent jet skis. Honestly, that might be his bag. <laughs> He works at a shop by the water. That's all I see. I see him with yeah. the visor on, just like <laughs> yeah. his earring in, listening to music, like not being a good worker by any means. I see it. <laughs> not being a, a good worker. Shop. That that might be where he's at. Oh, at a smoke skateboard shop. shop. Yeah. Yep. He's selling you Rick and Morty pipes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this was ashtrays uh, with like the Simpsons on it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you thought I said smoke shop. <laughs> I, said, say? I said skate shop. <laughs> oh, I said smoke shop. Skate shop. That works too, I thought, though. <laughs> I heard smoke too. <laughs> My bad. That works too. That actually works a little better. <laughs> Wait, say it wow, like, again so I can put it in the TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know where he works? He works at a smoke shop. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> that works better. Uh, <laughs> no, he, really, he really does look like a smoke shop guy. Yeah. All right, Marcus Smart. He works Marcus at a tattoo Smart's parlor. Annoying. Marcus Smart works at with the with the painted hair and everything. He oh, works there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That the dyed hair does there. sell me on that, and of course he's tattooed too. I, what does Marcus Smart do? He's either he's either, listen. He's on either side of the spectrum. Either he's working at the at the tattoo parlor, or. He's kind of all off. He's some type of freedom fighter, social social justice warrior. I can see him in <laughs> oh, a you know mean knit polo, just marching up and down this, the streets. This dude, he's a Black Panther. Yeah, this dude <laughs> over here, he's a repo man. That's what he does. That's his calling card. <laughs> just the worst, bro. Either repo man or you're over here handing people tickets. Just annoying. He's the repo as hell reaper. For what? <laughs> I think he works at Planet Fitness at the front desk. Hmm. 
That's just I stressful. could see that too. <laughs> no, it's not I think cool. he has lots of tips about your workout routine, and he'll help you out if you ask him any questions. <laughs> he's yeah. just waiting. To, he's just waiting for you to ask a question. Yeah, he puts his hands on his hips, like good form. <laughs> <laughs> this is a gym teacher. <laughs> Uh, Steven Adams Lumberjack He, he doesn't have a job He just like yeah. lives life He's a man of the land Yeah he just yeah, like figures exactly. out a way to eat He finds he finds places to stay He just he just survives He's just a man of nature I think he would never harm an animal He exists among them You might look at him and yeah. be like He could fight a bear He would never This man, this man is a sensitive bear grills He's the Ooh. real life Tarzan that's what, that's what it sounds like to me Yeah <laughs> Yeah yeah, he's I'll in. After him. Yeah, <laughs> he was in a treehouse somewhere. Yeah, the the beard and overall rough look, along with the single sleeve tattoo, easily lives in a treehouse, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the end of that video. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna name an NBA player, and you guys have to guess their 2K rating and see who's closer. Ooh. Okay. Let's do it. So yeah. You might both get it right because you're you're gonna know the range, but we'll see who gets closer. So, I want you to guess this NBA player's 2K rating, and we'll see who's closer. I want you to guess this NBA player's 2K rating. Perfect. Jordan Poole. 81. Jordan Poole's about 82. Mm. Final answers. Yeah, 81. Lock it in. Donovan is closer, 84. Damn, he's an 84. He shouldn't After be, but he season? is. Damn. Surprisingly so. You should know that. You were high on him. Oh, There must be some unknown attributes. <laughs> yeah, there must be some <laughs> unknown attributes to his name, bro. What does he have? Fucking Riz, I don't know. <laughs> Next yeah. up, DeMontis Sabonis. 86. Hmm. I'm going to do the same strategy as last time. 87. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Loser. Donovan died. is closer. Lame. 89 overall. Ha. Damn, Would 89. He's... 89. Wow, that's kind of high. That's a little bit Hey, too shout out to Bonus. Like He's nice, no, He was All-NBA. 86 is so disrespectful. He's nice, though. Yeah, it is. You're right, but I don't know. I just... I imagine him getting stomped on his chest. That's like the last Facts. thing in <laughs> <Facts>. my mind. <laughs> hey, wait. So he like, didn't miss a game, though. Durability is at a 99. Ooh, that's true. Those, those, are, the, those are important attributes right there. That's how he, he took a that. size 15 to the chest and lived to play another play. <laughs> uh, he got beat the fuck up in that series. <laughs> <laughs> they abused him. Yeah. Jalen Green. Hmm. 83. Jalen Green is an 81. Mo is closer. He's an 84. Damn, an 84. Same as... Okay. That athleticism is carrying. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it definitely does not deserve an 84. So, yet. Yeah. What are you going to do? 84 is kind of crazy. But let's go. Hey, Russell Westbrook. Oh, he's 79. Like 76. Damn, 76? You must not have seen him with the Clippers. He's an 81. <laughs> Woo! Damn, you yeah, he recovered me. that value in those last ten games. Donovan just hopped off straight from the game, bro. He's cheating. <laughs> you got nah, an expert man. over here. I don't even have a PS5 yet. It's on the way. Wow, it's on the way. Broke <laughs> boys, I don't miss it. Broke <laughs> boys, <laughs> 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 public expenses. Uh. <laughs> so I'm planning life events. So I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an adult. Next up, Jimmy Butler. 92. I'm going to say 93. And for the first time, one of you get it exactly right. He's a 93. Wow. Damn. I knew 2K was going to be. I knew they were going to be. You didn't know anything. You took yeah, my strategy against me. You were guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you that win. You shouldn't be prideful in that. I knew they are going to be all over that man because of the postseason run. No way. Yeah, he's easy in 93. <laughs> okay. Last one, Steven Adams. I feel like he's a solid 81 always. He just screams 81 vibes. Super strength, <laughs> rebounding on 10. I'm going I'm going with the... We're going to go 83. Okay, there we go. 
Wow. Our first tie. You were both equally incorrect. 82. 82. Damn. Makes sense. You're both utter failures and you're terrible at this game. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Steve Man, <laughs> one, one point off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of that. Nice. Next thing we have, the last thing of this episode, we're going to bring back something we haven't done in a long time. Not 20 questions, but you have one minute to guess his NBA player. Okay. Okay. Who wants to do it? Do you want me to host it? You guys want to host it? No, nah, I'll guess. I'll guess. Okay. Mo, you want to think of the player or you want to guess? Uh, I don't care. Uh, I'll go I'll go ahead and think of... Uh, yeah, let me go I, ahead I want to play, Steve. I want to play. And okay. I... Th- <laughs> okay, yeah. I thought of the player. Let me pull up a timer. Do a current player so it's possible. Yeah. Let me pull up a timer real quick. You got it? No, not I can do it. I'll do it. Oh, you'll pull up a timer? Yeah, yeah I got it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Say that hook for us. You have one minute to guess. Oh, my bad. Hold on. You have one minute to guess. On... You have one minute to guess the NBA. Say it again. Dude, this <laughs> shit is killing me, bro. This is the last <laughs> time I record with this shit. God damn it. Same shit happened. Fucking geek ass dude. All right. You have one minute to guess the NBA player I'm thinking of. Cool. Three, two, one, go. Is he in the Western Conference? No. Is he a guard? No. Well, is he a big? Yeah, kind of. Okay, so he's like a kinda. forward tweener. Yeah. Is yeah, he yeah. a good shooter? No. Is he, is he, an is he a good defender? Yes and no. Is he an all star? No. Is he a starter? Yes. Good defender stars. Is Lou Dort? No. He's in, uh, he's in the West? No. Oh, did, his te- said. Did, did his team make the playoffs? No. Well, did his, te- yeah. did his team make the play in? Yes. Is it DeJounte Murray? No. DeAndre Hunter? No. Zach uh, Levine? No. Is it oh, is it uh, OJ Ananobi? No. Scotty Barnes? Yes. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> yeah, Scotty Barnes. Damn. As soon as you said OJ Ananobi, I knew I was cut. Damn it. <laughs> out of my damn organization. Shit. Ah. <laughs> got it. We got it. We do this guessing shit. Damn it. <laughs> 50, 50 seconds damn y'all were yeah y'all were on the brinks we're on it. y'all were on the brinks this was a great episode yeah man and the episode is over if you're still here comments Donovan you decide you never comment decide what to comment let, let them know uh, strike that merch. you can't decide no 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 comment no. buy our merch <laughs> wow <laughs> I'm hurt I'm hurt comment buy our merch Actually, I don't even comment it. Just buy your merch. And I had a good one, too. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and tell them. Tell them. Let's listen to Donovan. Let's give them the right. What should they comment? Comment, the Wizards are laundering money. <laughs> okay, comment, the Wizards are laundering money. <laughs> You're propaganda. I love it. So, I buy know. our merch and then comment, the Wizards are laundering money. Yes. That's yeah. the order. See you next time. <laughs>